Get on. So here, check the levels. Mic check, one, two. Check the mic. Well, one, two, one, two. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, have that water. We got some water right here. I hear gave me one already. Oh, okay. Well, you got we got a lot of them. You want your water too? Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. How we sounding? Kirkland not giving us no endorsement. No, Let take, take, all take, that take it off. That, we got some already ready. That's what I was telling you. Oh, I ain't know, I ain't know shit. I ain't want, he bought these out already, so I ain't want to waste this shit. Man. Okay, bet. <clears throat> you know, water's no issue. I don't even know where Kirkland's is. Right. I don't know who keep buying them waters. But we have them, though. Must be an endorsement. I mean, it's water. I drink this good volcanic water. I mean, too, man. I love that it. shit. Good. I don't, I don't know what volcanoes got going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's alkalizing al water. Goddamn it's water, al water al delicious, al man. Shit hit different. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like I've been on vacation when I drink that shit. <laughs> oh, look! If everything is working, I am too. Check this out. I'm talking to everybody who got some ears, man. I'm talking about my people right now, bro. If you ever heard a No Limit record, you know exactly who I have in the building with me today, man. Oh my God, these men right here are titans in the music game. Several hundred million records sold and produced all exclusively by Beats by the Pound. Come on, I got my dick in here. I got yeah. KLC in here. Come on, man. This shit don't get no greater for me. Um, this one of them interviews where I got a million questions, but I, don't, I ain't asking shit. I'm just listening. Um, bro. Bruh, first of all, just know that the, the music that y'all produced and put together with No Limit really <laughs> had, it's really a, it's a soundtrack for a piece of my life that, you know, I wouldn't trade for the world. Just the excitement of going and grabbing them shits that I've been looking at in the back of them cases for come months on, and just waiting on that shit to come out. But what was that shit like to be part of one of the biggest movements in hip hop? Well, oh, before we get started, KLC the Drum Major album, P1. KLC the Drum Major, P1 is out. Get that understood. Oh. But that Moby Dick, unapologetically Moby Dick. Yeah, man, go get that. We out back like we never left, you heard me? Go get that fiend as well, you heard me? Hell yeah, big yeah. salute to fiend. Now, to answer that question, um, when, when I, when, when I uh, first got with P, it started in Atlanta at the very last Jackie Rapper convention. We in Atlanta right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that some shit? That's some shit right there. But, if I ever seen something. But, but it's just like when we got in the mode of making these records, nothing didn't matter if it wasn't the tank. Mm. You know, um, we had no restrictions on our workload. The artists didn't have a say so because the way we made records, we didn't have time to think about what you like or what you don't like. Oh shit, that's a cold approach. So. The whole thing was with us, just get on the beats and you're gonna be straight and listen. And that was it. Mm. Like we were in the straight zone that we couldn't get up out. <clears throat> Mo, like, you was singing hooks and everything. Um, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was doing. I mean, I was, it was pretty much like the first version of Call of Duty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like it was a real army. It was a real military situation. You know what I'm saying? Like the tank was rolling over everything, and P had the soundtrack to do it. But like it was, it was just a straight synergy, a straight vibe that I mean, like only the Most High could create, bro. That's Real what time. I'm saying. Hit after you know what what hit after hit after right. hit after. And hit. it wasn't work to us, bro. Real talk. We were having an absolute blast doing it. Right. We, I mean, having a time of our life just doing it. Then when we found <laughs> out people knew every word that we wrote, bro. You know, I'm just saying, like, oh shit, we got to give them more. <clears throat> I, bro, let me, KLC, let me ask you this: When C Murder said. KLC got the beat hitting hard like work. Niggas in to know you. No one man's big. That's got to be one of the cold, like, shouting a nigga out in the song. Right. Um, bro. bro, that shit. 
But you know something about that record, though? Tell me everything about that motherfucker. <laughs> Who was, nigga, that... <laughs> that shit'll make you beat the hell out of somebody. I'm talking about if it's a nigga in the club that you just don't like a little bit, don't be by me when that shit come on. It's still making them beat the shit out of you. Oh, my good. God. That's just the... Yeah. Like, if, I'm, if I do ever get to scrapping, I want that to come on. Especially if I want. What you think I'm playing after I done won? Locker room music. Go yeah, on, yeah. It was like, I remember, it is out of all of the songs that we've ever recorded. I don't re I don't remember recording none of none of that shit but this one. It's probably two of them and this one of them. I was in the studio, right? Just chopping up records, putting them in a the machine, my phone call. Nigga, you had these motherfuckers on TV talking shit? Call Magic, have a beat ready, I'm on my way. And the time it took for C to get off the phone and get to the studio, the beat was finished. <clears throat> Man. <laughs> Listen, the urgency that I heard in his voice, when I went to getting into that shit, it didn't even register to me what I was doing. It just like I, I zoned out and I was just hitting the pads and whatever came to me, that's what I did. And I, and I just went up the keys with it and I sat back. You know, Pete didn't allow smoking in the studio. You smoking mine though. <laughs> you smoke, you smoking him. So, I smoke so, just to um, show you that I ain't bullshit. When C <laughs> when P got there, I mean when C got there, right? He was in the booth doing the hook. And Magic was in a, in a corner writing his verse. And I remember Magic had a cigarette. He had his pad just writing. And she was like, I'm going first. So he laid the hook, he laid his verse. When that motherfucker was finished, I sat back. First thing I did, picked up the phone, called Snoop. Nigga. I'm gonna have the hardest song on your album. Snoop was like, I don't know, nephew. Dre gave me some banging ass shit. I say, Snoop, I didn't say I was gonna have the most banging and shit on your album. I said, I'm gonna have the hardest shit on your album. So we got a phone, right? I called Silk. Dude, you need to get on this fucking record. So Silk was like, cool, pick me up from the, I'm gonna pick you up from the airport. Silk picked me up from the airport. I popped the tape in, the bitch came on. Silk was like, yeah, dude, call me when you get a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so we get to the studio because we did the symphony record with Snoop, right? I told Snoop about the record on the phone, but he haven't heard it. So I like Snoop, we got this after he finished doing the symphony record. I'm like, I got this one I was telling you about. And he was like, nah, nephew, let's just do it tomorrow. See, when, I, when he said that, I know he was just ready to get the fuck. And I was like, well, let me put it on tape for you. So we popped the tapes in, threw the faders up on the board, hit play. Zan, 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 that bitch drop, zoom. Oh, they went to Crip walking in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Bodyguard, his niggas that he was rolled with, stood in front of the door so he couldn't leave and said, nah, nigga, you about to do this, bitch. Wow. You about to do this. But the trip part about it is, Snoop had to double back because they had, when they heard that, to tell Snoop, nigga, don't you know we shoot our movies? And all our videos out here, nah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta bring that shit down, my nigga. Snoop verse was worse than it was for that record. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm fucked up, right? You gotta understand that. <laughs> Listen, you got he just left that row, my nigga. And everything that he had in him, he was letting that shit out. That was the perfect song for it. Yeah. And I destroyed them fucking tapes. Him and Shug made it up. Cause I remember I did something with him and he, him and Shug made it up and um, a song that I did on my album, he um, told me, uh, man, Shug good, man. So um, just clean that shit up, you know, and just rock with it. Yeah. You say you only remember recording two of them songs. What was the second one? 
Gotta was be. it gotta about be. it? Gotta be about it. Gotta, gotta be. be. Tell me that story, bro. Hey. Wait a minute. That no, 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 no. It, uh, was it? To my recording or making a beat? No, recording it. Okay. No, no, no. Making a beat was some shit. Because I'm having issues with my daughter about this shit now. <laughs> Hold on. What? Behind about it. My, my daughter did the drums on about it. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> no. She was two. Hold up. Wow. Wait. <laughs> that was Shiny Chris Hill. Shiny. I'm right. Wait a minute. <laughs> Bro, I'm lost this fucking <laughs> How did you know that the two-year-old could do the drums? That's nah, a better question. Nah, it's it just like, she used to always see me work, you know what I'm saying, in, in the basement on the park with my, my, my grandma. So one time I was just in that motherfucker working. The drum machine was to my side, my keyboard was right here. So I had the, 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 the fucking music running, just trying to vibe out the, with the put to it. So she snuck down there and she used to always see me on the drum machine and she just slapped the pads. And that was the beat. <laughs> no wonder that shit sounds so good, bro. Yeah. It's coming from a two-year-old genius. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you yeah. publishing, Shani. Yeah, but see, that's the point. When yeah. she got older and she understood what them fucking big-ass manila folders was, which was royalty checks, she was like, oh, well, daddy, if you say I made the beat, well, I ain't seeing no money. I'm like, fuck, motherfucker ain't paid me. Damn. <laughs> you feel So... But um, but it had to be like that fucking No Limit Soldier though, bro. Oh, bro. That's just so hard. <clears throat> Which one? The first one. See, like I was telling you, it, mm -hmm. it was it, we did it twice. I know. Well, I remember when we very first did it. P was and I was the one you was talking about. On the true that was album. on the remix. The true album? No, man, that was on the remix. The no Limit Soldier one. Which one you talking about? The one that's on the TRU album. It was on the, the original. You talking about? You talking about the original? The on the TRU album. Right? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. And that was um. Craig well, my favorite No Limit Soldier verse of all time is when C Murder said, "I'm a No Limit motherfucking soldier till I die. We run in place, and I say the same shit yeah, with a gun up in my face. face. I ain't scared to die, bitch. Like I said before, whoa, whoa, third wall. I'm from the motherfucking Cali, yo. Projects imported <laughs> worldwide by drug dealers, transforming yeah. wimpy ass niggas yeah. into killers." <laughs> Competition gets smoked like we smoking blunts. I take a play, I hate a knock out his fucking fronts. Dope slang. A knife shot secret these a million record platinum. It used to be some quarter keys, true tattooed on my neck, bitch. That's my shit. We ready to hop into some motherfucking gangster shit. I say no limit loud. Cause we ain't scared of nobody. Organized by P or should I say John Gotti? Real niggas throw your guns up if you feel me. But if you talk shit, bitch, you better kill me. Like skull, I'm a hood look for life. I I told you. We be some motherfucking no, no living true, true soldiers. Free C murder, man. Oh, yeah. Man, free my cousin. <clears throat> Come on, man. Bro, you I, know that shit word for word. Bro, man. it's a whole lot of them motherfuckers. Banner like, told me, I'm like, Banner was like, nigga, this nigga is, this nigga is a fan. I'm like, man, come on now. He said, bro, uh -huh. Banner said, I called him that, and I uh, was like, KL one no. He said, what? He said, boy, that motherfucker got excited. I'm going to tell you some of my favorite ones. Prime suspects. Do oh, you know bro. my old lady? I fuck with that one. Hey, bro, Sons of Funk that. pushing this out of you. Moby, tell, tell me about it, man. That's because it's like you a producer, but I seen you as an RB <clears throat> singer from the hood. Um, bro. Like the hooks and shit is legendary to me, yeah, man. Like, like, like uh We didn't we didn't know that, bro. Let me tell you something. But hold on, but let me ask you this before we even get to that. When you making these big ass anthems that's historic like that, like, do you hit like you hearing this shit first? Are you know like you knowing this about to fuck the game up or like no. change the, you know what I'm saying, change the the, the whole wave of where this shit is going. It was it was like when we made these records, man, it was like uh we didn't have time to actually see the effect that the shit effect, was having. Like 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 right now. After over 20 some years, I'm just like my first time seeing the effect of what these songs did. Cause you gotta understand man, like 1998 <clears throat> was probably one of the biggest years in hip hop. And that year we dropped an album every two weeks for an entire year. So what 20, just say 20 plus songs, cause 20 songs was the easily, least. Easily, easily. So if you do like, uh, what is it, like 52 weeks in a year, right? Something like that. If you if you multiply 20 times 26 albums, that's over like 500 and something songs. That's what I'm saying. Like, none of this shit sound repetitive. 
Like, it's some sounds <clears throat> that came from y'all that you never heard again, like Swamp Nigga. He did that beat. That's what I'm saying. It's like, bro, uh, listen to me, my nigga. I never knew that record. Listen, like, right, I'm just finding out, like, this record, that Swamp Nigga, I didn't know it was that big. Shit. Shit. Let me tell you, when, when we was on the Legends Tour, right, I'm learning some of this shit from, from Lightfoot, the comedian Lightfoot. Yeah. He used to open up to, like, like when he, when he did, uh, Free codes. I never knew that record was a hit. Shit. The hoes did. <laughs> <laughs> if hoes ever could pick it up, bruh, these, I'm saying, these, <clears throat> these are not just songs. Like, these are time stamps in history for a certain generation of people. Like, when you said free codes, some of these women is in the church now. And, ooh, don't say that one. That's the one that'll make a relapse. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't know. Us, Beast by the Palm, my nigga. We didn't have a life. Well, I want to let y'all know that y'all definitely lived up to the name. It was oh, none of that. You, none bro. of that shit is a disappointment. <laughs> and every every one of them songs got a different feeling. Bourbons <laughs> and lacks. Oh, bro. Appreciate it, man. I mean, the thing is, man. First, you had five different members, which right. gave like P, P was telling you he got thirty-one flavors. Yeah. Those thirty-one flavors was divided by five. Men, you know, at least five men. That's mine. Is you know, call, uh, Kalu. Shout out to Kalu, DJ Daryl. You know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying other people we got work from. But what you about to say? Oh, so this is what I was about to say. I for, I totally forgot. Now this is a whole new generation of <coughs> internet people and shit, and they don't know the whole history like that. So Mo, tell them what it was like to be on them them world famous hits like them hooks, the Mr. Ice Cream Man. And, like I keep bringing up my favorite song, pushing this out of you, because it's just like, bro, that was when pussy still had hair on it. That was, I said, like, man, I remember that, that shit in my life, and I want you to talk about that so man. bad, because you was in the song. You know, I know. Man, come man, on, let, man. Let me, let me clear this up. I'm on. I want to send a shout out to Sons of Funk. Right. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rico, Dash. You know what I'm saying? The rest of them, man, like. Josh, I mean, it was like a kindred spirit. So I'm gonna tell you the story of that record. A lot of people think that's me, but it's not. Because we, it's not me, real talk. <laughs> I'm gonna clarify that for the record. <coughs> now, the thing is, is that we were like, we were birds of a feather. It's like, it was designed by the most high. But the, the story about them getting on, I remember P bringing that record to me. We were working on the Body soundtrack. Yeah. And at that Tonight. time, yep, P had had me on like, you know, say, yeah, you in charge of the R&B stuff that's coming through here, you know, because you are a vocalist coming through here. And um, he brought that song to me. We were still playing cassettes then, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he had a cassette player, and we were just riding around, me and Cuz. You know, he said, Cuz, he popped the cassette in, and he said, what you think about this here? That the next, first thing I came, wah, 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 wah. You know that sound, how it come on? Right. Man. You know what I'm saying? So, um, then the dude come on saying, You know, I know, it's gonna be good, girl. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> this nigga is right. I blood streaming down all around. I'm like, what? I'm thinking this, I'm like, this dude sounds like me on, on the slick, but I'm like, but it's not, it's like me listening to myself. I'm like, duh. I'm saying, cuz, where you get these dudes from? He said, you like it, cuz? I said, hell yeah. And he kept, and the song kept on playing. It just kept on going till, you know, kept on apexing and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Okay, check this out. You might not know this. A lot of people thought that was your group. It's not my group. They had their own group, man. All musicians, bro. That's the that all musicians. Make but but all if that. I'm not mistaken, then the lead, the lead singer died, right? Yeah, he died. Damn. The ones who so, getting that high note at the end, yeah, yeah. he died. He, he died. Went. Soon as he got, soon as they were signed to No Limit, they went back to Oakland. They were from, they were from the yeah. Bay Area. Yeah. And he he got caught up in some dumb shit. Damn. And, they, and he never, he never saw the light of day. And, and it was covered up for a while, man, <clears> because you know, pretty much like a little Beatle thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go into that conspiracy. Oh, okay. But uh, but the thing is now, so when he told me, he said, "Well, Cub, what you think? I, I, I ought to sign him." I said, but Cud, if you don't sign them, I'm leaving. You hear me? So I'm like, man, this is this is a, like our version of Jodeci. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, so far as the other hooks and the material, 
like so far the you know how I started singing hooks yeah. for my cuz. And said I already had my group called Critical Condition. That's matter of fact, me and him met before No Limit. He had his group 39 Posse. And that's how we met through um, uh, a guy who was a show promoter by yeah. Rest in Peace, uh, Bobby Marchand. But anyway, to make a long story short, I was already, you know, that's what I did, make beats and sung on hooks. A lot of people don't know I rap as well. But the thing is, um, when we were working in the Bay Area, when he flew me out there, flew KL out there, um, we were working on ice, really many <coughs> projects. The first TRU project, Mia X, Silk the Shocker, uh, Trey, Trey, Trey A. Down South Hustle. Down South Hustle. I mean, yeah. we worked on a shitload of man. Um, Skull Duggery. Skull Duggery, and the body, well, the body soundtrack came later. Yeah. But, um, so, <coughs> when we were working in the studio, I would just like sing along with some things like, and then Pew looked around and say, cuz, go lay that. So I would go lay it. It was on that, um, on that silk. Niggas just don't know that I'm taxing. That was the first hook that I laid. I'm um, saying, so yeah, cuz, go lay that. So uh, when we started working on the ice cream man and other <coughs> projects, he said, well, cuz, you got something for that? Cuz, come up with something for that. So uh, I remember K. Lou was working on the beef first for the ice cream man. And then I put my two cents in on the track. And um, you know, uh, Mia started singing before you let, you know get in the game. Yeah. Get one thing on this. So she was laying her first part, and as she was laying her part, I said, "Mr. Ice Cream Man," he said, "Cuz go lay that." And then it just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it just kept on, you know, <clears throat> it just kept on going. So that's, you know, I became the hook man in No Limit. Yeah. And people was calling me the Nate Dog of the South, and which, I, you know, I didn't know. Because you, bro, they don't understand. This is, you, know? you was looking like a whole gangster, bro. Gold grill, top and bottom, you know what I'm saying? Sinking these motherfucking hooks like a motherfucker, though, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, bro. But in the video with the bulletproof vest and all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> how, you know, how you know a bulletproof vest? All that shit. Well, it looked like it one. was bulletproof vest. <laughs> exactly. Man, one of my favorite No Limit albums out of the whole collection is that, that Life or Death by C Murder, because it's just like those. Those beats just, it's every, it seemed like every song, it was just, they was just jumping like that. Shit like a kick though. And, oh my God. And, and where I'm from. And, you know what I'm saying? Like those type of ones that, that really just stand out, man. And it's, it's just amazing that y'all made right. all these fucking albums. You get what I'm saying? That's just crazy. When we did that album, um, <clears throat> all of the beats that I had on there was, um, was beats that uh, Silk kind of didn't want. So C was always in the studio listening because he, he was up next. Yeah. So the minute Silk would listen to something, he'll go listen to what I have, listen to what Cuz have, listen to Craig B. Odell, and on Carlos. So the minute he'd listen to some shit that I had, he said, I'm going to go peep out what Cuz got. He's like, he won. Like, he ain't said nothing, he said, put it on the side for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, because like I said, it, it, it was to a point to where, like, when we was making that, that record, it put, C, C is probably the most prepared artist on No Limit when it came to making records. Yeah. Him and he, Slim. Yeah, him and Slim. Him and Soldier Slim. Yeah. So they'll come up in there. See, he'll come up in there because, you know, he was in the military, so he had this strategic way of doing shit. He had the whole song written. First time I seen the motherfucker, he was a highlighter marker, right? He'd come up in there and highlight all this ad libs on what he gonna have on this track, one color. Ad libs on this track, one color. And he'd just come up in there, open his fold up. He'll be rehearsing and come on, let's go. So as we knocking him out, you know, he'll go up in there, he'll finish this one, he'll go to the other room over, what you got, just pull it up. So just we knocking just, him out. Just knocking him out, knocking him out, knocking him out. And he had the most, I think he had like 26. Songs on well, the album. 26. I think he had the most out of all the projects. Let me ask y'all this: Like, what was what was the what was the beat selection process? Like, was it just who was coming up? You get these or what? First come, first serve. First come, first serve. First of all, it was like when night when we had that big year in 1997 with Ghetto D. Yeah. He called a, a meeting at the end of the year. We all went in. He put on the bulletin board. This year, I want to make a hundred million. 
And so after that, he came in the studio, and this is uh, the lineup for the year. These are the dates. We need to make that. So in the process of making these records, just, let, just think about this shit. It takes a, it normally takes an artist a year to make a record. We're doing that shit. We did 26 in 98. It never happened about two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Now, just think about this here. We made all the, we had to make all the beats. So each one of them albums took at least eight days to make. Not only that, we mixed we mixed them and engineered the session. So just think about this here. It took eight days to make, so just think about Mix this. Mixed and mastered in The whole days. album had to be done in eight days and turned in. So that mean the album really got to be done in six or seven days. No, to... it, it was about eight, it about eight, because I'm going to break it down to you. So the album, we dropped every two weeks we had to drop an album. So eight days we had to have the album done. So another two days we had to fly up to California to master. Let alone, it had to be turned in to be pressed and released. Shh, that's a hell of a And the credits, because we had to get the <clears throat> credits together. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. when you're looking at a 20 plus song album. Every two weeks. Every two weeks, for an entire year. We're looking at over 500 songs a year. For that year, who did that? R.K. Yes, indeed. Shit. You know, so we didn't, we didn't have, like I said, we didn't have time. You know how some motherfuckers are able to sit down, let me vibe on this. No. We, you, we didn't have that luxury. This should have this release date. They have to be met. And the thing is, at one point <clears> in time, <throat> man, it was so much work had to be done, we had to take shifts. Some of us had a night shift, some of us had a day shift, and we Just rotated we switched, and right. switched, you know what I'm saying? So we never stopped. You know, the machinery, we would outlast the machinery. So oh, we, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, certain things would break down, we had to replace them in the middle of the production of the album, so we had to go buy, because we had this thing, if this was before Pro Tools, so I'm saying, so, and the thing is, think about the Pro Tools versus then, you had, to, like, like he was talking about, C had this thing organized, had all his lyrics and songs organized to where he went, in, when you went into that booth, you had to perform the song. Mm. It was going to be like that. Right. You couldn't go back and edit it and stuff like that. The only thing you could do is record over it. Yeah. But the thing is, but we was, we was pressed for time, so you had to get it right, right then and there. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah, bro. I mean, it was no joke, man. Like, a lot of that stuff, like, is a blur to me. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I don't remember like most of that shit. <laughs> now, we we in the middle we in the middle of recording sessions, right? And the motherfucking machine break. Right. So in the middle of that, we pulling this motherfucker out, popping in a new one. So while we doing that, we gotta take this motherfucker and fix, open the bitch up, fix it, clean it up. Now the other, the one in the other room going bad. So this one that we fix, we gotta bring it over here. Right. Bring this motherfucker out, put it up in here, and do go through all this shit. shit. And let me, um, let me ask you this: Did, did you ever? go in with certain people in mind for certain shit or it mm. just didn't work like that? No, it didn't work like that. Damn. Like we said, first come, first come. <laughs> like, Fuck, I thought like you, you were said like, Because it's just like, every, like when you listen to the catalog, it's like, like what, however the shit worked out, that shit, everybody had a unique sound and you know what I'm saying? Right, but this how I play it out. Just say if I'm, I'm, fin I'm finishing up C Murder album, right? So while I'm at the end of C Murder album, he already starting on the next album. Okay. So it was always assembly line. like a relay. Assembly line. Man, that sh I'm confused as hell right now. <laughs> that shit crazy just to know that it was just, hey man, here goes some shit. Right. Get on there and figure that shit out. I mean, I thought about something, but I got shit to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and don't fuck up. And the thing right. is, That's now, crazy. <laughs> the thing is, not Thing is now it was like iron sharpening iron. We had hell like yeah, because those were all MCs. great. Yeah. So you know you had to go for yours. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like a um, almost like competition, a friendly competition, like on on a basketball team who's gonna be the first starting five or the first starting eleven on a football team. You know what I'm saying you had to really be you know <clears throat> proficient in, in everything you had to do lyrically and right. delivery and all that. And you had to be be hungry like Mac and Fiend. And see, they never left the studio, man. They were like, uh, 
an extension of us, because we never left the studio. But they, the reason why you heard Fiend, like he said the other day, Fiend and Mac and all that, they was on so many, so much, you know, material because they were already always around. You know what I'm saying? Even after right. the projects were done. Always ready to go. Always ready to go, bro. Man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, shit. Hold up, man. We are deep into this interview with Beats by the Pound. This is the 85 South Show. Hey. <clears throat> This would be the perfect time to bring him in. Huh, bro? So, we can do that, and then, uh, huh? Two minutes? All right, bet we'll stop down and regroup. Okay. And um, re we'll reset and bring everybody in. Okay. All right. Hey, that was, that's perfect. Oh, that's I appreciate good. you. We like, appreciate you. Bro. Name, and we're not, we're not done. Uh -huh. We're just going to regroup and bring everybody in. Okay, already. Hell yeah. What's up, Lex? If you go around the corner by the piano. Okay. Man, once again, oh my God, this, oh, man. this shit is heavy. This Every time we try to come out and do something positive, they don't want to help. They be like, black people not going to support that bullshit. Go to the... Go to the website. 85apparel.com. Say it again. 85apparel.com. Man, put it on the screen. You know what I mean? And I know my accent a little heavy when I say a pearl. It's not a U in it. A pearl. You know how to fucking spell. A pearl. Go get some a pearl. Go get some a pearl. Sick of this shit, man. Shit. Every day. Man, Do another let, hat. Man, let me get a hat. Yeah, let man. Let me what, get that hat. What's up, man? Take that off. When the 4X gonna be in? Yeah, man. Where you mad? Y'all ain't got nothing for babies. Uh, man, what the we, fuck? When y'all gonna get some ones? Yeah, I know, man. Cut some of this man, shit out. Man, buy the shit we got. So yeah. we have to... Save it for your baby. That nigga gonna grow up one day. He gonna want this. I'm tired of telling them. Me bro. too, I'm man. I'm just gonna start wearing all the shit myself. I wear it every day anyway. I like it. Me too. It's nice. It's nice quality. Everything. Know. You know what I mean? That shit's soft, man. It's made out of hoodie material. Yep. Even the pants. We got hoodie. sweatpants made out of hoodie material. Come on, man. Dude, and it ain't like, this ain't no knockoff shit. You can wash, you can wash this. Right. Ain't, ain't like, gonna fade it's or nothing. It's the same. Better than that shit you used to. We making sure. Bro, I had this hoodie for the whole five years. Yeah, I know. Look, still bright. All the way. And niggas don't know how to wash clothes good, so it's not because we have a good washing routine. Bro, it's and we got the all the nice. nigga colors. We got black, we got red, we got blue, we got we got some pink shit for the girls. White socks, rolling tray, lighters. Man, what else they want us to come out with? I, I better it. add, I guess, because we got to keep doing these motherfuckers. I'm about to call LL Cool J. Right. I'm about to pay somebody else to do this I shit. I know, right? Get that nigga to roll his pants leg up one bro, time. I don't know what they want me to do. Everybody who come through here get some of this dope ass shit and be like, I like that shit. Yeah, it's nice. It's thick. It's cool. Hey, man, what, why that hat cost that much? Nigga, we don't own no factory. We had to cut a deal. We got to make some money off this shit, too. Exactly. I don't understand why y'all... Nigga, just even the tag in our shit is better. It say 80, it's imprinted on it. So a motherfucker can't say... You know, like Biggie said, they go to nigga with the fake eyes. You ain't got to worry about that. It's real. It's our shit is shit. real. Nay, that's what I'm saying. You got to get our shit. Because when we see y'all with the shit, that ain't our like shit. We don't know how much the shit they be buying costs. Right. Our shit don't even cost don't that. Don't even cost that much. Man. I had somebody send me a DM saying, hey, man, it's an 85 South Show's hoodie I'm marking up for y'all. What you think? I think you need to get that shit the fuck out of my page. The bootlegger sent you the shit today was bootleg? Fuck, you gonna get me to approve some bootleg shit. Taking food out of my kid's mouth. Right. With my idea. Right. Wow. Motherfuckers. Buy some of this shit, man. Okay? It's Christmas time. We ain't gonna see the money till April anyway. Just go ahead and get some of this shit. I don't know what else to tell them. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> right. right. That's why we got the place, man. So it took forever to find a place that would let us That smoke. you can smoke in here. Yeah, who now had um, uh, studios back here? Stu you had uh, two. Yo, we gotta get y'all the same mm -hmm. tape. Oh, at, oh, no doubt. Okay. Well, yeah, well, you want to. Yeah. Right here? Yeah, if you want to. Man, this is for the South, that, man, motherfuckers don't show enough love to the South. I keep saying that. Oh, uh, man. But what, what, what Pimp C said? The uh, South took over rap, over rap and we ain't giving it back? Come on, man. 
it back. Yeah, yeah. he gave it back. Uh, no, nah, it's <laughs> real tough. Without James Brown, where would uh, music be? Come on, man. Come on. That's yours. You know what I'm saying? Without Louis Armstrong, where would jazz be? Come on. You know what I'm talking about? James Brown said all his instruments are strong. Come on, bro. Right. Tell me that! On the one. <laughs> James Brown was yelling out personal business if you listen to them shit. Some of them had nothing. Jimmy ain't gonna ride! Yeah! <laughs> ain't get home! <laughs> ain't get home! <laughs> I'm super bad! Oh, no. oh, that motherfucking mystical is the James Brown listening motherfucker. For real? What? He don't I listen. can see that though. Like, he don't listen. Like when, when we go on and do it, he, he put his phone up, put on all James Brown shit. Go to, go to uh, we leave the shows, go to uh, the Waffle House. First thing you go to the motherfucking jukebox, look at James Brown. Man, we gotta get mystical on this bitch too. Oh, yeah. hell yeah, I we can make bring, that happen. We gotta bring everybody on. <clears throat> Meg about to get out too. Oh man, I, hell I yeah, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. We're still free him, man. Meg gotta come, hell yeah, man. Well look, without further ado, uh, I'm gonna give you part two. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. Oh, yeah. 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 Some of the most legendary producers out of the South. Man, look, this part two, let me give it a proper intro. Cause you already know how, how much I like one of the songs that he produced. Well, you, you like a lot of the songs. Look, though. man. Yeah. We got Don Juan in here joining us for part two. Come on, yeah. 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 Producer out the South. Come on. Don Juan, give him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, Don Juan. Shake it like a dog. Come on. Come on. Hold up. Let me tell you how managed we used to be. The well, that's the one where you find the speaker in the. Shake it like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, Come yeah, on, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna kick the tape. That's what I'm telling you. That's Rock the type the boat. of shit that do. Rock the boat. Come on. Mm. Come on, man. Job of style. Now that's the one. I heard <laughs> one. This man here. This man here. This man here. Hey. Is it going over? That might be the song he hear right before that's he hit the stage. I'm telling you. When I'm, even if I'm driving to Louisiana, when I see that sign, I turn that on. <laughs> um, bro. Shout out to DJ JMK, you heard me. Yeah. Big fest. She oh, peace. Peace. Well, look, man, man, you got to get your respect. Full rotation too of, of, of this whole cycle of creating all this music, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. So Don, Don stepped in right when we left. He did. Yeah. He had a lot of, he had some big shoes to fill. Well, they, what, they, they came with the gangster music. We brought the pussy popping over there. There you go. Okay. Yeah. See? <laughs> How did you know? Not twerking, pussy popping. Right. Pussy popping. Yeah. Big yeah. there's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. No, no, let me tell you between like, like. Break it down. Twerking, it came from New Orleans. Cheeky Black had a song that Manny Fresh produced called Twerk Something. But the word twerk was used as a clean edit for saying pussy popping. Right. We just dropped some history what? right oh, there. Yeah. Give us that Hold one on. more time. Say that Hold one on. more time. Just twerking, or well, like I said, Cheeky Black had a song called Twerk Something that Manny Fresh produced. And a matter of fact, a lot of these bounce records that you hear, the sounds come from that record. Mm. And um, twerking is, was just a clean version of saying pussy popping. But right. in New Orleans, it's really called pussy popping. But when they had to go to the radio, it was it changed was twerk. to twerk, mm -hmm. twerk. Wow. just to clean it up. Wow. See that? And that was the birth of twerk. Come on, now man. The birth, the of, birth twerk. of twerk. Come Come on, bro. The, <laughs> the birth of twerk. Come on, bro. So yo, and it yo. came out of pussy. Hey, man. <laughs> it came out of It came out of the pussy. Clap for your comedic genius. Come bro. Pussy <laughs> gave birth to twerk. What? Absolutely. Popping pussy popping poppin gave birth hey, to twerk. Hey, 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 y'all hear this. Look, look. This ain't no shit. Y'all white people trying to take that shit over like, uh, what you call it, Hannah Montana? Can't justify this. Fuck that. I don't know. You get it straight. Made New Orleans, Louisiana. Fucking right. And Cheeky Black. Cheeky Black had a song called Twerk that Manny Fresh produced. Mm. Yes, sir. Shout out to Cheeky Black. Shout and Manny. Man. And Manny Fresh. Fucking right. Yes, indeed. Man. That pussy popping music, because it, 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 it's. New Orleans got such 
just its own everything. I ain't never seen a city with its own type of food. It got its own right. energy. Yeah. Like y'all got your own type of music, the, the sounds. Like just let it. What, what was what was it like back there when Pussy Poppin' songs was? Going up. Oh, I ain't man, never been yeah. in there and seen them. Really. Yeah, man. It, it okay. like, when, when, it, really when it became it. famous, no, yeah. <laughs> when, it be, when it became famous, it was like, it, it was really like, like some natural shit. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. It was just, you know, it's like if you go in New Orleans, it's so big in music to where you just walk down the street and see somebody with some instrument in their hand. Yeah. But at the same time, you, you're fucking ride, drive down the street and you're caught bumping that shit in, in the broad outside. She's gonna hear that shit and just, just out of, she thinking she in the club, she's gonna, uh, oh, oh, my bad. I forgot I'm in public right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but it, that's just how it is, you know? And it's right now, it's just, you have to experience that shit. Bro. Yeah. Man, could we have this thing called <laughs> Second Line? You know what I'm saying? And which yeah. twerking is a byproduct of, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, Almost like a wide open, uh, what they call it, Soul Train line, but it's in the wide open, bro. So everybody doing their thing to live, like you just said earlier. I mean, we got the brass band, the second line band going on the street, and like Greg Street said, they're jumping out of the trees and all that. They be grabbing on the poles or whatever, and on the handstand. They had who came up with hit the wall hole? Oh man, they should be man. man. Females to be on their hand, and their feet to be on the wall. Not and that beat this. going in the club, that, that's another thing, that beat. That's what they call it, that beat. That beat to make them do it, you mm -hmm. hear me? Every time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they have, that's how Every they be, real, real talk, make to make a long table, story. I'm telling you. Yeah. For the female, yeah. that's how they be feeling when that yeah. beat come on. Let me tell you something, bro. If you've been to New Orleans, like the average person that come, if you if you just listen and understand of some of the shit that they say, in real that old school bounce music oh, the pussy pop music bro if you listen to some of the shit that they say you would never believe goddamn like it must be your pussy because it ain't your face come shout on. out to dj come jimmy <laughs> you know what i'm saying just shit it. like that, that you know what i'm saying right. come on it's so the shit it. <laughs> dj jimmy dj jimmy come on man come yes, on man indeed. slide and do the pussy pop right yeah tt tucker yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. Where they at, who? You know what I'm saying? Where they at, who? Oh, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got Bounce. Bounce started out as some gangster shit, though. Yeah. Bounce really started out as gangster music. If you listen to some of the old, old Bounce music, it was gangster niggas that wanted to rap, couldn't, but they like, fuck it, I'm going to bounce this bitch. Mm. That was something like, get the gat. And, um, get the get, get the get, get the get. That just yeah. had a whole Elf. new life, man. With some Lil Lil young, they just redid yeah. that one not too long ago. Yeah, that song, we put that song out like 80, 90, 80, 90. That was on his, on, on his on label on Parkway Pumping, man. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, yeah. Just some, just some real so really, the world was just slow. Yeah. yeah. The world was just slow. Y'all hit, hit worldwide with. All of the bounce music that they sampling now, it come from the bounce music that was 20 years ago. Yeah. And back then, the rest of the world didn't matter to us. Right. You watch it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all got, got motherfuckers putting their feet on the wall and bouncing their ass. Oh, I right. wouldn't care about the rest of the world. And then he was in a DJ. He was a DJ in a club called Rumors where the, the most gangster of the gangster was going down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like somebody was getting killed like every other week in that mall. Yeah. But you know, that's where like the, the hotbed of all that music was being played, DJed by him. Man and Fresh, and what's some other DJs who were playing that bounce? Yeah, DJ Duck. Duck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. In the but projects. Let me, let me ask Do you this. Do a DJ like, in the jet. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me ask y'all this, man. For y'all to be, you know, creators of so many original sounds, like, now that that seems to be in demand, what, how, what, on what scale of ease is that to create for, you know, giants like y'all? Just the sound. Just Say, for instance, somebody wanted to buy a new, New bounce sound, sound like is where is that in the repertoire at this point in y'all career? You know, because that's what y'all did coming up and shit like that, right? Right. It's like as far as me, it depends on that artist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it is like right now to where like the money is not like it is the way money is now, and for selling beats. Yeah. I'm not saying the same money is not coming to the table after sales and streams, but. Right making beats and selling beats to where like if somebody back then if somebody wanted to get a beat from me right right if they have an artist 
they would have to pay me 10 or 20 grand to come in the studio just to hear them. And if they were gonna buy the beat, my price of selling the beat, that 20 was gonna go towards it. Just the fact that you gotta pull me from doing what I'm doing to yeah, come hit it. Right. Because what I'm doing is worth more than what you pay me already. So it kind of forced their hand to well, fuck it, we gonna pay them 20 to come listen. We might as well work the difference out and just get something from them. But it was getting some dope shit though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, That's so. Real shit. You gotta, yeah. But that was money. standard though. That was standard for producers. Yeah, like, you absolutely. know, we were getting fucking just on the love of showing niggas love on the beat to where we was getting, okay, I charge it 20, 25, because they had fucking budgets, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had that kind of shit, so. I never got 20 grand from a beat. Let me let me get a brief rundown of like your intro to the game. Like, how did you get to the level where you making hits for these artists, you know, I mean, no limit in print like that? Well, I started off DJing and met one of my partners who just pa- passed away, Big Fest, rest in peace. But we started a little group and went from DJing to producing records to even um, rapping ourselves. Right. You know, after that, kind of went, we stopped doing that and just concentrating on just doing the production. And we was pretty good at doing pussy pop music, so we kind of stuck with that. <laughs> when did that become your niche? <laughs> uh, shit, nine and one. And we put out Pim Daddy, a record, uh, local record in New Orleans called Gotta Be Real by Pim Daddy. They had some yeah. good success. They made a lot of balanced uh, versions of that song. Mm-hmm. Right. I yeah. think that's one of the ones that they, the DJ always dropping in. Yeah. Responsible for it, Classics. Yeah, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this shit is wild. That's that is still being played today, you know. Yeah. And it's sampled, good. man. A lot, I mean, those are one of the staple, like a lot of the records that they made full pack. That's the name of the production crew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were like part of a staple of bounce, of pussy, well, pussy popper music. <laughs> Talk we can't be able to bounce. <laughs> bro, this is the 85 South Show. Pussy Poppin' definitely has his place. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying, Jeez. it's known as bounce now, but, you know, bounce music is synonymous with pussy. pussy bounce pop, make, yeah. bounce <laughs> music making pop right, for well, pussy. Look, let, me get, let me get it from you then, Don Juan. What, what, are the, what are the ingredients to a good pussy popping track? Kick, snare, hi hat, and just have that feel. It ain't really about what you put in there, it's how you put it in yeah. there. Damn, that shit got real. <laughs> it ain't about what you put in there. That's how you yeah. put it in there. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. some shit you can live off. And you gotta be from where we're from. Yeah. Right. You yeah. gotta, it's, it's, yeah. it's a culture, man. It's, 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 a, it's a beat now. But it's a beat that represents a culture and a people, man. But you know, the, now that they saying one of the biggest criticisms is that the ladies rapping about the pussy too much. I think I was appalled when I heard this. That is the most goofiest <laughs> shit that I have ever heard. You mad about like that song WAP when that shit took off? Mm-hmm. Like you saw all the all the backlash and criticism they took for having wet ass pussy. But they enjoyed the video. They all damn right. sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It said, "Don't does it have a parental advisory tag on it?" Thanks yeah. to uh, Luke okay. Skywalker. The, the, does it have that on it? Yeah, it was yeah, a lot of, of yeah. that Parents be parents, please. But ain't nobody tell you right. to listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. If you don't like it, you ain't close your ears. Right. right. Close your ears. Fire yeah. high, you know it's high, but you yeah. still gonna stick your hand in there to see? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. You already know. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck. Monica you know who it was that was mad about the song? Who was it? The dry ass pussies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's what got mad. Oh. You can't advertise this shit if we ain't got it. Oh, man, it was a whole coalition. Dap. 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 Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, they fucking over for us. Fuck. Shit. Yeah. That was a great one. That was the only way. Yes, sir. I'm now, this is one of the uh, questions I was going to ask, though. Is like, <laughs> you said you spent so much time in this cycle of just creating, creating, creating. Right. Not being able to really enjoy the success and, you know, not really even just branching out to being able to say, I'm going to work with this artist or this artist. Right. Like, have you had time to catch up with some of those projects that y'all put on the back burner to put, you know, your situation at hand first or what? No. I, I haven't. Um, Man, what? yes, you did. You had one of the biggest records for Luda. Yeah, 
Well, well, you know what? Let me, let me explain to you about yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know Move Bitch Beat was original for DMX, right? What? Yeah. Rest in peace, DMX. Man. Rest in peace, Rest DMX, peace, DMX, man. Rest in peace, DMX. Hell yeah, yeah, definitely. Rest in that peace. That was for him. When when Fiend sound a rough Hold ride. on, wait a minute, cause no, you stop. You like you, you, <laughs> you said stop. Cause you said you know. I ain't knew we shit. We didn't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we was just back up. And I bet he had. Right I should have put on. the do first. Do you know? There you go. <laughs> huh? Now I'm listening. Okay. This is hip hop trivia. Nobody knows. Well, um, Fiend when he sound a rough rider, I sent him some beats, and um. Care pack. Cause Fiend was like, nigga, I'm in. Send me some shit. So I sent him some beats. He bought it up there, and uh, they heard one that Jada like. But unfortunately, back then, we didn't have the internet. So we he had to send shit back. Be. See, murder rap, don't he? After you know, but mm. when I made some, shit, I made the shit for Jada, but they wanted changes in it. So after the changes was made, I had to change it, send it back, and he was at the tail end of his record. So when they heard that shit, they was like, nigga, you need to make some shit like this for X. And that's when I did the move bitch beat. What? <clears throat> I can see it. Though. I can't imagine. Look, that would, oh my God, man. Right. And then um, the, the thing about it is by us going back and forth, and it got too late. Jada had to turn his record, and I was like, fuck. So I just didn't send the beat. And then we met Luda in New Orleans. He was on tour with Outkast. And we had met him on St. Charles at the trolley stop because he called, okay, I'm in town, boom, boom, get some beats to me. So when we met him up, boy, this shit was so motherfucking funny. So we standing, we out there by this restaurant, and we playing some beats from our movie car, right? And while we listen, I heard bump, 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 bump. He was like, what, what the fuck? He was like, Get me up out of here. We just go, uh, <laughs> shit, let's just go. We're like, Mo, like, man, just chill out, chill out. You know what I'm saying? So, chill we, out. Yeah, listen. <laughs> so, we were like, just listening, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you know, Lord, he was just looking around, you know, just paying attention, you know, trying to focus on what's out there and what's in here. And, bah, bah. Oh, man, look, I'm going to go, man. Just give me the BCD, boom, boom, boom. And so, I get him CD, call me, nigga. He played, he went through the beats and he said, is this one available? Cause you gotta understand, we was making beats on No Limit. We really didn't have time like to even name them bitches. And I was like, just play it so I can hear it. <laughs> and he played that bitch, right? And I'm like, nah, it's open. Because the thing about it was, when it didn't get the X and I didn't send it, I submitted it for Mystical. And Jive didn't want to fuck with it because he caught that stream and that chemistry with Pharrell. Yeah. So they wanted to keep it kind of like that. And when I did the Luda, um, Luda heard it and he said, when I get off tour, I'm coming down there by, by you to record it. And so when he got off, he called me. We, we recorded that record in my house. And um, he came down, he laid the hook, you know, we recorded that part. And the trip part of body when he got dropped off at my house was so fucking funny is that he got dropped off and he walked in and he turned around and said, all right, I'm going at y'all. Oh, you ain't letting them in? Like, man, I don't know them bro. They just gave me a ride from the airport. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. We uh we did the thing. He took it, he took it back with him. First thing he called me, nigga, we gotta get mystical on this bitch. Came back to him. Yep. Came back to him. Right back. Couldn't avoid and it. And Mystical is the reason why I-20 is on that record. Because they were supposed to do a third verse. Mystical being lazy. Man, what we need to do, man, what you need to do, nigga, is uh, put one of your artists on that bitch you're trying to break them. Mm. Some masterpiece shit. Right. So, um, <laughs> and I guess Lou was like, yeah, yeah, you know what? And then that's when he put I-20 on the record. That's how I 20. Did. They was supposed to do a third verse and split it. Mystical was just being lazy. Damn. That's all, no. That, that's all move crowds to this day, <clears throat> goddammit. That's indeed. My God is his biggest record. Yeah, <laughs> but that, 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 that was originally done for DMX, that move bitch beat. Damn. That's wild. That's, that's crazy, man. So if a motherfucker ever thought about if you were to make a beat for DMX, what it'd be like? 
that's in the movie, bitch. That wow. was his. Oh, that was made for him. Man, that's that's the wildest shit. Somebody just gonna have to go story. give us a little oh, blend man. with that. They just take an X verse he already got and put it on there just they so we can. Right, man. Yeah. That'd be dope, though. Same yeah, shit I just to, I, I know Oof. they know how to do this. In the, well, y'all know how to do it because y'all man, made once the beat. They, once, once they see this, somebody will will definitely do that. <laughs> And it's going to go crazy, too. The bounce version, too. <laughs> right, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great idea, Don. But nah, man, we, we, man, we had a lot of fun making them motherfucking yeah, records, bro. But unfortunately, I had a lot of fun listening to them. Man, bro. Whatever you intended. <laughs> like, that's what I was saying. You ever, like, y'all was just cranking them out. Do you ever be surprised where they end up or what they turned into once they out, out your hands? Oh, man, be honest with you. Once we re reached a certain um, height in, you know, in our career, like when the Ice Cream Man, you know, went pla a gold, when we got our first gold plaque, we knew that it was real at that point, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, just coming into it, we just was doing what we do and making our contribution. And even beyond that point, man, like KL said, we didn't have time to enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just, like, like I didn't know I had I was talking to Kel the other day. We were just you know reminiscing you know like certain on certain times and periods. I didn't know that um, <clears throat> that um, making move with stuff with Thug was even had any type of impact in the club. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that till I went to a club. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know the effect that our records had because right. we were always mm -hmm. confined in the studio. Yeah. 24 7, man, like 25 8, bro. People we, get right. their ass whooped to y'all music. People get <laughs> <laughs> something to y'all. Right. <laughs> we didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Right. Was I found, Gale, love songs and shit. I found right. out, this this how I found out, out about some of the records. Because, like I said, at one time we was on the Legends tour and um, Lightfoot used to come out on some of these records and I didn't know they were that hot. But Jeez. one time, me, man, and Toomp did a beat battle here. Yeah. So, with me, I didn't know what the fuck to play other than, you know, like, Down For My Niggas, Move Bitch, and About certain it. records, but like the, like the songs on the album that wasn't, you know, I didn't know what people was bumping. So look, it got to the point to where I started just playing shit with the crowd. I was, man, play this. And so I'm up there, Manny, and Manny, and T.I. was hosting the bitch, right? <clears throat> so he'll go to Manny. Let me play this, I'm telling you. If you play this here, I'm telling you, gonna be done with. Mm. He go to Toomp, Toomp, look, nigga, you know how we get down, nigga. You already know what to play, but play this one, it's gonna be, you know, it's done deal. He'll come over there by me, KLC, nigga, I promise you, my nigga, you play this one, it's over with. Mm -hmm. So he just going around the table, just fucking taking, I'm like, oh, okay. And as they're telling me, I'm just playing that shit, I'm starting to see, I'm like, oh, all right. Man. Damn, I didn't know that shit was like shit. that out here. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Yeah. All over. Yes, everywhere, the whole what United a hot States, boy is bro. bro. We just didn't Craig know, B. bro. We just didn't know. Craig B, I, bro, we, we did not know. Damn. My nigga, we did not have a fucking life, man. Damn. Damn. We had, to, we had to have our fun in being creative of making this shit because you look at all this, like once their album is done, you may not see them until next year or when their next album come or if they're going to be doing features. Nah, nigga, when they done, we on to the next one. To the next one, to the next. We had to do that shit for a whole fucking year. Five years. Oh, yeah, five yeah. years. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And look, look, the fucked up part about it, people talk about 98, but they don't think about 96, 97, and 99. Right. Yeah. We just talking about that one year we did them, like, we produced over, like, 500 songs. I'm not talking about the two years before and the year after 98. And folks were buying everything. <clears throat> yeah, they were buying everything. I bought it. I was telling niggas to get this nigga get fan shit so I can get you. <laughs> the DRU shit, nigga. But, it, look, it, but like I said, we can't. You know, I came in with a bang and left him with a bang. You know, my first song was about it. My last song was down for my niggas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a great that's, intro that's, and a great exit. That's that's not mean, for I gotta bring up the legend, man. Soldier Slim. <laughs> oh, rest in yeah. peace, man. Number yeah. one, man. For real, for real. Know what I'm saying. Damn. He came through KLC, man. He came through KLC's Parkway Pumping. Like I'm saying, a, a lot of I would say at least 85 percent 
of the artists came through that man right there. That's what Fame yeah, said. Real talk. Now, at least 85% of them came through that man because he, like I mentioned earlier, he had a record <laughs> label called Parkway Pumping. And yeah. in his group that he was in was called 3-9 Posse. And they had other ones that he can go down the roster and tell you himself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Soldier Slim is pretty much like, you know, his experience and he shared Soldier Slim with us, with us and I appreciate him for that, man, yeah, because yeah. To yeah. me, he was one of the most prolific writers, and like, like I, was, I bounced off of him when he said, uh, "C. Murder was one of the most prepared <clears throat> artists," and I said, "Besides Soldier Slim, Magnolia Slim, right. see, we got him. He got signed to us directly when he got released from prison. Right. You know what I'm saying." And when he got out, so you know, in prison, you got a lot of free time outside of defending yourself and stuff like that. But when he got out of prison, and we, he got, when we got him, this boy had notebooks of albums already written. Right. See what I'm saying? So, so it was like a no-brainer. And the thing is, like, like KL will tell you, I, I want him to tell you, he, get, he could tell you better. Whatever he experienced in real life, yeah. he put that in on, you know, on the from the pen and pad and then relay that to the microphone and get in that booth. He was already, all he needed was a beat. Yeah, yeah he, he coming straight off the street with, okay, nigga playing with me, come on, man, I gotta go call this shit, man. fuck all that. Like that. Slim Damn was about to be with Cash Money. But he was like, nah, fuck all that funky beat, whatever you go, I'm going, cause me and Baby talk. Cause he wanted, I had, I had Slim and I had this other artist named Reg called Slugged Up Nigga. He was grilled up from the top front all the way to the back to the bottom, all the way to the back. Damn. That's and, a piece um, slug up nigga. For real. Yeah, and um, I remember me and Baby had a talk. He like, man, what you gonna do with these artists? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit, I'm trying to, you know. He said, well, let's work something out, man. Get Slim over here. And I bought the idea to Slim. Slim like, man, fuck all that, man. Nah, man. I'm gonna get out your and hustle, nigga, and, and uh, if I have to take my money and you put your money, we gonna do this shit ourselves. You know, that, that, that's, that was his loyalty for me. He said, wherever the fuck you gonna go, that's where I'm going. Or oh, FYI, man, <clears throat> he, he ain't gonna tell you this, but tell him, him and Baby got a history. Tell oh him, yeah. How, tell him how far you and Baby go back. Man, Baby shit, man, Baby plays saying like football together, nigga. <laughs> what? Birdman. Yeah, we went. We was in middle school. Me and Baby knew each other before Manny and Baby knew each other. Me and Manny, me and I know both of them before they knew each other. <laughs> yeah. That's a small New Orleans. Where shit coming? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause you got mm -hmm. me. It, I was like the top DJ uptown, right. and Manny was the top DJ downtown, and we wound up working uh, in a club together called Club Rumors. That Moby was telling you about early. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a legendary so, club. Oh, hell yeah. That's where Bounce Music, uh, Rumors, and Big Man's Streamline. Mm hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Four so nine. that that was that was some of the um Big the Daddy major clubs where Bounce, what, what, you know, where Pussy Pop music started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pussy Pop. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so important for the culture. Slim, man. Slim, yes, Slim was, Most Slim. of the people who listen to this show are a result of Pussy Pop. I can believe that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you yeah. think about it, if yeah. anybody who about 30 right now, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. See, man, how can you not, if you're a grown ass man, you hot and bothered and you seeing something on the wall, bending something, and then they bend it over and you seeing something about that big from the back. <laughs> How you not gonna bust on yourself? You know what I'm saying? You take a dick you know what I'm saying? Nigga who gonna yeah, you gonna want for this shit. Some of them big, some of those baby were actually made in the club. Hey, see if y'all like this pussy pop track. That's some of them the baby were actually made in the club on the dance want. floor. They yeah, were going <laughs> in them, naked see, head. Man, how the album yeah. coming? Uh, that's all that I want. <laughs> <laughs> I, got I got my gangster shit. I got my clothes on. I need a pussy pop. I need a pussy pop. I need a pussy pop. Yeah, a lot of cars like that too. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what that's yeah. what brought us to No Limit. Real the stuff we did, you know, shaking like a dog and all that. Yeah, yeah. He wanted that song, but he got us <laughs> after they left. You know. <laughs> yeah. But man, you did a good job keeping that shit going. Though. Yeah, but that motherfucker Slim, bro, you know, he like, he was, he was something that, he, he, 
it was no wrong in him from the city. If you had a problem with him, right, or, if he was right or wrong, if you had a problem with him, you had a problem with the city. Right. Damn. It was like that. Yeah, that shit on lock. When they, and when they talk the, the, the best, now when you talking about the best lyricists, you know what I'm saying? We talking Maxine, Wayne, yeah. Mystical, you know what I'm saying? Um, we have some other legendary niggas, but the people that that's noticed that everybody know, you know, we talking about Mystical Wayne, you know what I'm saying, Fiend, Fiend Mac, mm-hmm. Mia, and um. But when it come down to nigga that run the city on his rap mm-hmm. shit, slim hands, slim, down. hands, hands down. down, hands down, yeah, it's not even a question, and they know that, they know that. You, know you just don't know what it's like to hear that from people who know firsthand. Though. Yeah. Slim, like, Slim, we always got to see it from the fan right. perspective. It's like, yeah. Slim, Slim was the balance. Him. Slim was the balance for No Limit being in the Magnolia. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you look at uh, cause you, you look at Slim, Juvenile, and Turk. They were from that project. You know what I'm saying? And then you had like um. You know, P, you know, C, Silk, you know, they, they from the Cali, so they, um, you know, Slim kind of British that shit. Yeah. When Fiend came, he said that he didn't even realize he was living like four blocks down the street from you or something. Yeah, right around the corner. Right. Literally around the corner. And Max stayed right up the street from where Fiend was staying. Oh man, speaking of Mac, they just gave him some clemency, right? Oh yeah. yeah. They just waiting for his court date and he mm-hmm. out there though. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Finally, come on, bring Mac home now. Great. Oh yeah. Man, what like seeing this whole digital music age take off, man, like how y'all how do y'all see it? From you know, from being in a time where there wasn't no internet and you had to get it right there to seeing how easy it is for artists to create this music and, you know, rapid speed, damn near. To me, I mean, things had the technology always evolves. It's right. just about how you adjust to it, you know what right. I'm saying? <clears throat> now the difference between then and now is that it's, it's, it's made like anybody could do it almost. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which is a blessing and a curse, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these artists figure that they, one day they're going to pop and don't know that it takes a machine. Right at the end of the day to become, you know, noticed, you know, in the industry. Yeah. Now, and it, which makes, which makes it be a pretty much a clusterfuck and puts them in a card shuffle to be found. <laughs> you have to really know the business side of things and how to market yourself, yeah. right? you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's, I think it's good. I, I don't see nothing wrong with it. You know what do I'm y'all saying? still create at that pace? Um, I still kind of do shit the old way because it's like, um, when you have a sound that's familiar that the people know yeah. and they still want it, you just can't say, man, fuck that. I want to do some other shit. Right. Like I said before, like McDonald's have never changed the way they make their fucking burgers or their fries. That's what you want. Yeah. And that's you what they want. I ain't changing shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Big Mac. And them fucking whatever they make the motherfucking fries with. Mm-hmm. So, but I had to do some adjusting because you know, before I go through and deal with any changes, you know, I have to be forced into okay. Now I have to do this shit. Yeah. You know, but <clears throat> once you learn it, there's a convenience to it. You know what I'm saying? But it takes away your creativeness to where like when we made music back then. We had to think about, okay, how in the fuck I'm going to make this one sound sound like 10. Yeah. But with today's shit, you could, you could just go and fucking download some sound banks and, you know what I'm saying, and just pull shit from it. That's why I like, like a lot of producers, they make a lot of great shit today. But you could tell that. They could, they could go to each one of them and say, yeah, I know where you get that from. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not authentic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> See, we come from an era of building drum kits and right. sound designing. You know right. it's, still, it's still possible, you know, with this technology, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you what's a big, a big advantage to it. We could take our whole studio with us. We have right. our, stu- our whole yeah. studio with us right now. We have portable studios. 
to where in, in the software world, speaking of software, we do have our own, you know, what they call a VST or a plugin where we have all the beats by, the, I would say a good degree amount of the beats by the pound sounds that we are known for making those records we are all talking about right now. I gotta now. get one for my dog, Jay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no, I, I'll definitely get that yeah. to you. Yeah, you got some pussy popping. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they got a pussy popping. <laughs> no, we, we, we Shout out. No, we got a pussy popping kit for yeah. you. Yeah. Shout out to Studio Link, man. Studio Link, I'd like to send a shout out to the man. We, <clears> we did a deal with them uh, two years ago. And uh, well, three years ago now, it's 2021, and it's out on the market. You know what I'm saying? You can go on and get it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we got all those sounds. That's the beauty about this technology now, right. that we can actually share ourselves and our sounds with it, man. So yeah, it's called, it's a self-titled VST called Beats by the Pound. I mean, it makes sense, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So we put that out, we did that deal and put it out, and, and our sounds could be shared, and they could just do their own version with our sounds, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But that, I mean, with this technology now, man, like <clears throat> it simplified things and it made it to where we, we can still be creative, you know, in, you know, in the music world and also in the business world, man. So right, I, right. I, I love it, me, to be honest with you. Yeah. It, it just, it's just about when you get accustomed to it. It's, it's like anything that you get new that you never dealt with. Once you find a way to maneuver through that shit, you'll be good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I know I could be stubborn on some shit when I'm in my ways about how I do shit. Yeah. I would have to be forced mm -hmm. to change. <laughs> you ever made some shit that was too good that the artist couldn't rap on? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I me, and, me and Mystical had that problem every time we fucking record. Yeah. Yeah. Because the shit that I make that I like, nigga, this is like, nah, man, I ain't feeling that. It, it, it just, I, I just can't get it. Right. But the shit that I make that I'm like, man, I can't. I, I don't like this shit. Nah, nigga, that's the one, bro, I'm telling you. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, bro. He said, man, look, I want that one, bro. I don't fuck what you talking about. Well, just give it to him. I'm right to the hell. So you know mystical like all the shit you don't like, that. Yeah? Right. <laughs> right. He said he thought. Well, I was about to say heavy yeah. ever, but watching this motherfucker record a record is some unbelievable shit, my nigga. I believe it. Listening to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look. When he we sounds like he talking to somebody. Listen, every time. <laughs> every time. When we was recording his records at No Limit, in the booth, we had to put fucking pillows and cushion on the floor. He kicking Because he rapped how he performed. He kicking He stomp, he scream, he be back and forth, he be moving. The way he performed is how he record. That's why when he performed, he don't lose a beat. Because he record how he performed. That's crazy. Oh, he beat his own self up in the booth. His own self. Real shit, he be all that shit. <laughs> I'm like, what the I fuck? <laughs> he goes the fuck off, bro. And then he loud. <laughs> yeah, and he loud. And he loud. Uh, Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like? We were talking about that the other day, but we yeah, we bro. always talking about, hey, Mike, me and KL always talk yeah. about it. Bro. But all see that time. mother, you see Mia? When we do a Mia session, she give you no reason to leave. She like like she cooking for a family reunion. She bring all that shit to the studio. Love going to the studio. Y'all hungry? Y'all don't have to fucking leave the food right here. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like she cooking for a family reunion. Everything, fried chicken, fucking jambalaya, gumbo. All of that shit is in the studio. We about to get my album done. I'm trying to get this motherfucker done, and I'm not trying to hear. So y'all don't have a reason to leave. Remember? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she fed y'all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that shit was good. I know it was good. I already know me and X food good just by how oh, hell she yeah. <laughs> I mean, by the way, she got her own, you know, cook cookbook show, yeah. cookbook yeah. and all that, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. product. She got a seed in call. Uh what is it called? Uh for uh for whatever. Man, right. I got something too. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Put it on anything. Put, Put it, it on yourself and your hand and lick it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever took the season on, man, and took it out the out the uh, yeah. bottom and look in your hand? Yeah, I mean, was a badass yeah. kid. Yeah. <laughs> you got that, you hear me? So, the whole season. Every, so every, every, everybody had their motherfucking moment, but that motherfucking mystical and then um mm. Mia were calling their records. Now serve was like when we when we recorded serve on record, that motherfucker was like a uh, um they had a ball in the studio at a club. Oh yeah. Um, bro. So, I mean, like we go in his session, everything you need to drink is just all across that bitch. 
Mr. Serving. Serving drinks. Serving. Drink. serving <laughs> yeah. Stuff. Shout out to Serving, man. Hell yeah. As a matter of fact, me, Mr. Serving, this man here, we were all roommates. Yeah. When we first went to No Limit because, uh, you know, P was, at first had us living in like some, I mean, like putting us up in hotels. But then he saw that we were going to be up there for a while. He said, nah, man, because, you know, because he started the label in the Bay Area. Yeah. But when he had his home people around him, you know, he couldn't just let that go like that. He said, man, like, at first it, it, it went to like a little trip to see how California was right. to us staying up there. Then he went and got us an, uh, uh, an apartment up in, uh, I think that's what, Hayward, you know what I'm saying? Hayward, right. In Hayward, California, out in, out in the Bay Area. So that was me, him, Servon, and me, and we call ourselves Three Niggas in the Broad. You know Three niggas in a bro. <laughs> <Three niggas, yeah. laughs> yes, indeed, bro. Three so, niggas yeah, in a bro. Bro, I would love to tell somebody, man, what you listen to? All oh, these three niggas, niggas in a bro. <laughs> Already, we working on something. We yeah, working on something. bring it. Shit. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. Come, bro. We 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 got busy, you know. And you know, that month, but I don't think nobody I work pee in the studio though. Oh man, it's not even close, my nigga. He was there with y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, he would do, the man wore so many hats, man. I mean, it was amazing, like, man, where did this dude sleep? Right. You no, know what I'm saying? He'd come off the plane, off the road, and like, clockwork, not missing the beat, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, right. shout out to Master P, bro. Nobody, I mean, it, the, this music industry wouldn't be what it is now, y'all know it. Without that man making his contribution yeah. in that grind that he yeah, put yeah. down, yeah. man. Because you're so, seeing, the, it's a lot of podcasts now where a lot of artists are saying it. You know, he was the first one that really had some money in the game, for real. Oh. Real talk, that's real. Yeah. That's yeah. real, man. And that was the game changer right there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. man. Real talk. He, 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 he gets in. Distribution, all that shit, yeah. Yeah, 85, I, I mean, 15. Like, this Come nigga. On. That was yeah. unheard. This deal, like, yeah. shit, that shit unheard of now. Yeah, let me tell you, right. like, I, I remember like some of the shit <laughs> like, um, when they tried it, when he was, you know, first getting signed to the company, you know, like every Wednesday they'll do like a staff meeting at the at the record companies and shit, and his name used to always come up. You know, like man, you keep bringing up this masterpiece shit. If you fuck, if you like him, fucking sign him. You just deal with him. We got this Ice Cube record we worried about. Yeah. Lo and behold, about to drop. That was a wrap. <laughs> a whole movie came out. A whole movie came out after that. Oh, we saw that. Then moment. that was in a, that, that was a nail in the cup. Yeah. And they still try to deny him. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Cause he he, he intended for it to come out on the big screen and they, you know, right. They they they, they uh they blackballed. Did. He said, yeah. okay. Nigga, first we're going so straight to, v, it, to a VHS. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm gonna put it in the hood. Everything, <laughs> everything in that body moving, nigga just showed up. They found they right they found a location that man we're gonna shoot right here. A nigga rolled the camera and it wasn't even a fucking script written, nigga. <laughs> Real to get on that bitch and do something. They had Bro. one, but said fuck it. They like fuck it. They rolled the camera and he just freestyled every part of that motherfucker, man. Yeah. yeah. No script. They had one, be like, man, fuck that. This is what it is. However he felt, and that's how he was in the book. When they talk about niggas. Don't write shit down or uh, freestyle. He literally did it. Like some niggas may, they probably don't write it down, but they're thinking some shit and remember it. But with him, like fit off the dome. Our 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 format of how we how we recorded a lot of these records and why they impact because we did not lose the moment of how that shit felt when we first when it first came about. Yeah. Cause like we could be <clears throat> in the studio having some beats knocking, right? And all of the artists could just be right there by the door wide open and they're just talking, laughing, having the joke and having cracking jokes and shit. And they could just say some funny shit like um, I always say this thing like, yeah, we went somewhere, man, this and this bitch came up to me, she had motherfucking gum in her head, nigga started laughing. Oh yeah, that bitch had gum in her head. She had gum in her head. Come on, man, let's go record that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah, we recorded shit. music, my, my nigga. Lady. Really? And he and he'll get in the boot and and he'll get up and that just he'll freestyle that shit. Some of the shit didn't make no sense, but the shit was so hot, the people made it make sense. Nah, nigga, this what he meant. <laughs> this what he meant. They gonna tell you what you mean. <laughs> right, right. I still don't know what the six inch girl to mean. 
<laughs> six inch girdle. You put, put somebody in a six inch, inch, inch girdle. Mm. Put your body in a six inch girdle. I remember he asked, he asked motherfucking, uh, he said some shit about the sob hob. You know, <laughs> Buzz, Buzz, uh, the crazy up. shit Master P ever said was that. Uh, Nigga, I'm like an ostrich. Nigga, you want some sausage? <laughs> <laughs> not, we were talking about the other day, not sausage. 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 <laughs> not sausage, sausage. <laughs> that nigga around that whole ostrich, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, what he said, bro? Say it one more time. <laughs> Nigga, I'm like an ostrich. And you want some sausage? <laughs> <laughs> well, see the thing about it, I don't remember when him, I don't remember him saying that shit. Um, bro, we, bro, we work, we, we working too hey, much. I'm from the ghetto, grew up on eggs and lunch and meat. That's the truth, though. That's yeah, the they, don't, they, don't, they don't sell lunch and meat no more. I mean, I mean nah, why? We, eggs and rice. we will get to the days <laughs> where kids won't even be able to participate in lunch and lunch meat. Man, the reason why I love that Han video by Juve is because he's feeding the puppy the lunch meat. Damn. In the video. In the video. Holding it up, too. Mm -hmm. Holding it up. Right. Mm -hmm. Holding it up. And shit, I remember as a kid. No, that, that would be cause of outrage. Oh, bro. But they, they got busy, though. Now, we, we had, we had don't, 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 don't get me wrong, when, when shit had to come to the end, you know, it's like, we put in some time. We try to work that shit out, my nigga. Yeah. So don't think, like, whatever you hear, like, man, them niggas got the fuck. No, that's not the truth. We literally tried to work this out. But, you know, he he you know he just wasn't giving in you know we really really tried we met we, we met with him like two or three times after we left but he just was on his road man and in his ways you yeah. know what i'm saying and man i mean it is what it is man we 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 just had to agree to disagree you know what right, i'm saying yeah. and the thing is like it was just time i mean we had a five-year run think about this five-year run and what we accomplished within those five years, people still can't keep up with that to this yeah. day. Like yeah. you were talking about how we made all those records in one year, five years and stuff like that. I mean, it was time, you know what I'm saying? Then cash money was already on the bubble and it was good to pass that baton to the, and keep it in the city. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it came through that with that, with that uh, uh, 400 degrees and the block is hot. Oof. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to Manny Fresh, shout out to, to, to Baby, Slim. Jewel Man, Victoria. love them dude. And they from the same BG. side of town, all from uptown. Right. That was a cold Wayne, tag. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ran it for a minute, and then when it was just a little <coughs> slow down. We man, tagged them yeah. in. You know what I'm right. saying? So, yeah, man, that's shout out to the city. Man, right now, even, man, we got some, um, some sleepers right now in the city of New Orleans. I mean, one thing about New Orleans, we have a plethora of talent, man. I'm yeah. about, I mean, it's, I mean, because we don't, it's not industrialized or monetized like the Atlantas, like the New Yorks, the LAs, man. I mean, yeah, like me and X son, he a dope ass. Oh, brother. retarded, yeah. man. Yeah. Jack Joe, shout out to Jack Joe. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. We got another sleeper working over there for uh, for for uh, Jay Z right now, huh? Uh, crack tracks. Uh, oh, crack. Crack tracks, yeah, man. He, yeah, yeah, crack work with um, J Electronica. J Electronica, man. Shout out to J Electronica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, it's a city, man. It's like we'll never run out of gumbo. We'll never run out of crawfish. Yeah. You know, we. I mean, it just innate. It's just a mind of talent. I was talking to Don earlier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just about to ask Don one. It's like just knowing that all of this was going on, like you said before you got there, man, and then you stepping up after you know you stepped away. Well, what was it like to have to keep that same pace going? I ain't really getting into it to really keep the pace going. We were just really making music, having fun making music. Yeah. And, you know, that's why the attention was brought to us to come up there and help. And we just pretty much did what we did in New Orleans with him. Right. You know? And we were just blessed to hook up with uh, Weeby and make that a hit, the hits we did and with Chopper. It was natural. Yeah. Rest in peace, fifth wall weed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, if, 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 if let me find out. <laughs> right, 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 right. Up, man. Home, he was talking that shit on this. Yeah. He uh mm -hmm. I think um well it, it him going to play basketball was a big part of it too. Yeah. Was the beginning of it because um before he played any we never had problems, but when, when some came up, we was able to address them to where 
because his office was right there next to the studio. Right. So we're like, man, look. But when he left to play ball, um, all his numbers changed. Then we have to talk to him, to talk to him, to talk to him. Damn. And then the message would come back from P to him, to him, to us. So that ain't even the so same message. When we talking right. about what we need to do to get fixed, <laughs> it's getting back to P, man. Them niggas tripping. Exactly. Yeah, they ain't telling what you said. Right. Them niggas just say, man, them niggas tripping. Well, what you yeah. say? You know, man, you know, it take a while to see a motherfucker. Oh, well, bro said, man, he basically just said. There's <laughs> <laughs> so many words. That nigga's tripping, man. Right. I'm telling you, bro, bro. He told me to tell you, man. Oh, and by the way, I got somebody who make beats, too. <laughs> At the same time, plugging somebody else in. Yeah, I got right. somebody who make beats. Oh, no, my man. I mean, you know, I mean, you don't want to buy the hound. I can get you, like. So even with that being said, that can be an awkward ass situation, you know, outside of the business. Well, him and Moab is literally blood cousins. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you know, like they try to say it don't mix the family and business, you know what I'm saying? But it, we had, we were a different kind of family, real talk, you know what I'm saying? Right. We we were able to be 100 with each other. And we, I mean, P never played any favoritism with me. Right. See murder, silk, you know what I'm saying? It was business. Like, they were brothers, I was the cousin. But, you know, like pretty much one way or another, the whole tank was kin. You know what I'm saying? Mia was kin to somebody, Sir was kin to somebody, serving... Serve knew C Murder before. That's how that's how uh, Servon came to the tank through C Murder because they played ball together. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I mean, everybody uptown knew everybody. Like you said, him and Baby knew everybody. So it was a family affair. But yeah, it was kind. Of, it was pretty weird. You know what I'm saying? Because like at one time, I mean, like he said, I was able to just call you, and it got to where I had to go through somebody else who ain't my cousin. Right. You know, you call me cuz, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I understand the business happening. He, he has to do what he had to do as a, as a CEO to keep his name, which was the face of No Limit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which became, I think, was pretty much, um, you know, too much, too many eggs in one basket. Yeah. To where we had a lot of talent on there, man, to where it could have really went for, for a while. But, uh, yeah, man, the communication line got, got kind of diluted and distorted. And, um, you know... It was weird, man, real talk. It, I, I can't even front, man. It was kind of weird, man, because it started off one kind of way yeah. and, it, and it went another kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so look, man, like you got this long ass list of songs that y'all, you know, a long list of music that's been, you know, created and produced by y'all. You ever had to listen to some shit and be like, did I do this? Oh, we always did that. Oh, yeah. We, man, let me tell you something. When we recorded a lot of them records, is that. <laughs> Some in the crack. <laughs> no, no, you bullshit. But God, I did that one. Right, but that's how it, it was like that. Fucking with me right there. Nigga, start that off. Let me hit me right quick. Who you listening to? Who you listening to? Me, nigga. This is some of my Wednesday shit too. Who got that laptop no more? This is some of my Wednesday shit. It was so much shit I did on Right, it, it, it could have just got to the point that he should he could have just put produced by Beast by the Pound. You know what I'm saying? Because they got man. Hold on, hold on. His two year old did the drums on ballot. You wouldn't hear when he said this. Hold on, man. Now I just said the tone. Because I saw where he was going. He was about to fuck us up with one more. And I had to get you that one before we got to this one. No, the two year old did the draw. Like, like recently or then. You no, mean, then. The, no, original the original shit is done by a two year old? Yes. Yeah. Your son. When no, he was my daughter. daughter. Your daughter. Before his son was born. Was two years old. Did the drums. Yeah. To bout it, bout it. Do she know? <laughs> she looking for her money. Too. I would have told her. I would have been like, "Hey, shit, relax." Um, uh, Don't watch this. She was like, "With my check." I mean, <laughs> look, no, 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 no. But I didn't mean to cut you off. But I, I saw where that was going. Hold on, so I need all that, all that explained. Well, I'm, 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 I'm gonna make it quick and short. Like I say, like when I'm in work mode, you know, I, I came up with all of the parts. 
I have my drum machine here, my keyboard here. I finished playing all the parts, but um, my daughter, she used to always come see me just hit on the machine. So while I had the parts, I had the machine in loop mode playing while I was just listening to it. And she just came down and just slapped the pads. And that was the drums to the, to the body beat. You know, but the thing about when she slapped the pad, I, the, the pads, I spanked her and brought her upstairs. And I, I walked down like, fuck, and it came down. Oh, that shit dope. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> Johnny. I told you, man, that was one of the ones that fucked me up. That's yeah. crazy. And the thing about it, it was, like I was saying, when she learned about, um, when I used to get the manila folders before they start sending all your royalties direct to your checking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she understood what royalties was. So when she saw that folder, she already knew what's coming with it. And she was like, well, um, well, daddy, if I did the drums, why well, I ain't getting paid? I was like, fuck the motherfucker ain't paid me, too. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I ain't getting paid for the bitch, so. That's hilarious, yeah, man. Yeah, man, so that, 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 That's that, a that, classic. Yeah. That's one of That's black history. Exactly. But that that, that, that song, that song kind of solidified P, because you got to understand, when, when me and Morbid got yeah. there, P was working with a lot of other dope niggas, you know what I'm saying, like EA Ski, um, DJ Darrow, DJ Darrow, who made Keep Your Head Up for Pop, uh, oh, K. Lou, and a lot of other, um, Al Eaton, Eaton yeah. and a lot of producers from the Bay. But about it, me and Morbid, that album was done. But when Mo, me and Moby got there at the end, he was like, well, let's just um, go to the studio, let Moby and KL get a beat on the album. He did Fuck Them Hoes, and I did Bowed It. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was it. He just said that shit so casually. <laughs> right. He did Fuck Them Hoes. <laughs> 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 and I did Bowed It, and from that moment, he was like, I got me. Mm -hmm. That's my sound. I got my sound. Hey man, the way he had an identity. <laughs> I just wish I had a piece of work called "fuck them hoes." <laughs> <laughs> just so in forty years, when somebody Google me, you know the original creator of "fuck them hoes." <laughs> Sample from a from a big movie dick. <laughs> right, but but oh, just bro. just just think like when we did, man we did those. I mean the album was done, my nigga. Yeah, we got that at the time. When um, he was about to turn that, he was about to turn that motherfucker in, and he was like, "Man, let's just get go to the studio and put two more on there, so we, so KL and Morbi could get a song on the album." And that was the beautiful thing about Cuz, man. I call him Cuz. He called me Cuz. But he wanted everybody involved. Yeah. He want. He wanted. It's like what they say in in the uh, military, like when they're at war. Leave no man behind. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you were there, you're going to get you some. At least get you an opportunity to get your name in the credits. I don't give a fuck if you was on a skit and you hollering and screaming. You saying right? something. You're right. going to say something. You're going to get you gonna get your recognition for that. <clears throat> and if you notice, that was the, the No Limit way of doing things because every album was a compilation. Every last mm -hmm. one of them. <clears throat> you know, and that's like when y'all went to seeing those, those inside inserts the albums that were coming out mm -hmm. because he, he it was a, a, a genius market marketing scheme of if you know these albums coming out we got to feature them on this album so you right. can get a taste of what it's going to be like on their own album right he saying? did do that like mm -hmm. when he dropped his album whoever the artist was that was coming out after him was going to have a song on his album by himself mm-hmm yeah so that shit worked. <clears throat> that shit worked mm -hmm. like the motherfucker waiting on this goddamn shit. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker, his, his marketing skills are off the chain. Yeah. Mm hmm. But, you know. Damn, I hate that that shit ain't work all the way out. Right. For real. I wish it did, you know. You, you never know where shit would be. Shit. Would, it probably got to the point the way else to cash money would probably been working. And, and see, that's the tripped out part. Everybody on No Living and Cash Money knew each other. Like, Fucking jam tight. It was why it didn't work out with the heads. We don't nobody know but them two. Damn. Mm -hmm. man, but we can see man and Juve on the street. We out there motherfucking fucking chilling like a motherfucker, hanging and like that people see us crazy. like. Oh yeah, you see that. But it's still working <clears> to, <throat> to, in, a, to in today's time now because mm -hmm. him and Manny do they do DJ right 
about the versus, you know what I'm saying, <clears throat> DJ battle. Right. Like I said, they already knew each other. They DJed in the same club. Right. right. And to, to be honest with you, man, um, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just saying this right now. One of my biggest uh, dreams is to make that happen. Right. To make put P and Baby on the record one day. Fuck, do a tour. We're we, we going to make it happen, man, real talk. You know? yeah. P and Baby, y'all listen, y'all getting on the record together, bro. Yeah. yeah. You said it right here on 85 South. Yeah. We're making yeah. that happen, bro. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah, that is. That's big yeah. shit, right? Yeah. 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 But it, it, it was more, you know what it was, too? It was more like each one of them niggas had some street niggas with them. Out the Cali, out the Magnolia. And the Melf, I mean. And the Melf. Yeah. So it wasn't the artists. It was them street niggas that they had rolling with them. That mm-hmm. was, you know what I'm saying? Into it. Yeah, that, 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 that's the shit that kind of um, make what we was doing not work working together. And from the same side of town, uptown. <clears throat> yeah, fucking walking each one distance. of the projects is walk. Each one of the projects, you can walk from the beginning of this building to the end. And that's how close them projects are to each other. The Mac, the Melf, and the Calio. Don one, yeah. can I get your top five pussy popping songs? Because <laughs> we have <laughs> to a new audience of 85. Welcome back to the 85 <laughs> South Show. Oh, you, you know, when you when you around this type of energy, OGs, man, it's, it's, it's more listening than talking. But I want to get into some of this pussy popping music with my man Don Juan. I want your top five pussy popping songs of all times. Because this a, is this a whole internet audience and they're going to go and listen to them. So give me yeah. give me a few that we can, people who may not be so familiar with the pussy popping genre. Some of the magic you've created. Well, Pimp Open. Daddy got to be real. Pimp oh, Daddy yeah. got to be real. Yeah. Uh, Shake It Like a Dog. Shake It Like a Dog. By Kane and Abel, Fifth Wall Weed, the Master. I mean, uh, PNC. Uh, Mystical was on the remix. Mystical was on the remix. Mm-hmm. Chopper style. Chopper style. And this ain't not really a, a New Orleans pussy pop song, but I ain't have nothing to do with it. Uh, now that's your list. You can throw whoever you want to on it. Throw that P. Throw that P? Who's the artist? Luke Skywalker, man. Come on, uh, throw that P. It's a, it's a lot of them at this point. You're talking about. <laughs> Oh, the, the original, the original. Come on, the original. give me I'm some sorry. credit, Don. The original. The times have changed. <laughs> yes, sir. Right, right. You got them throw that pizza. Humber, humber, humber. Pusha T got one, and this is about time to go, man. Humber. Did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> you missed a lot of shit. I was outside, Don. Warren. Nice. <laughs> but they, they have some motherfuckers like, uh, like, like, like um, throw that pizza. you got fucking Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Where they at? You got Eat the Cat. Okay. Oh, Ju- Juicy, rest in peace. Juicy, Juicy. rest. You made a song called Eat the Cat. Juicy, cat. eat the cat. Mm-hmm. I want to hear that. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was just like, get the cat, get the cat, but it was eat the cat, eat the cat. I like Ooh. it already. <laughs> <laughs> I like it all, motherfucker. Oh, um, which one that was? Uh, Twerk something by Cheeky Black, yeah. of course. Hell yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Can't forget that. Um, you got a uh, lady red smoking that fire, but this was a weed record. But yeah, it was yeah. called smoking that fire, but they they, they pussy popped off there too. Yeah, I know all these songs that y'all name, and I, I'm a huge fan of New Orleans culture music. I watch all yeah. them uh, hood stories from from the YouTube page. That shit just randomly pop up. I've seen every right. little documentary about every hood, mm. all wow. that shit. That's why it's just so dope to hear this shit, man. Right. Your name come up, and every time they bring up music, man, they gotta bring up. KLC, B by the pound. You get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And it's just like, hell, I, I ain't even know that you had all of these, you know, pussy popping the anthems, bro. You, <laughs> bro, you a whole Come goddamn. On. Y'all man. just gave him a whole playlist. Shit, that strong you think little playlist about to right go there. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Song similar to yeah. Fuck them hoes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Play me something close to. <laughs> monkey on the dick. Oh, yeah, monkey on the dick. Monkey on the dick. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Monkey yeah. on the dick. Damn, monkey yeah. on the dick. Yeah. Oh, no, monkey on the dick, top five. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> definitely. Monkey on the dick. Just, the verbiage of that is classic. Monkey, yeah, yeah, monkey on the dick, definitely <laughs> top five. <laughs> There's so many of them motherfuckers. You know how many, how many uh, fucking fans we got that was created off of this music? Come on, man. Y'all definitely got to be responsible for the population 
increase. Man. Oh yeah. It was so much fucking going on. I know we going I, I know when they see this on this part here, we gonna have it. They they gonna fuck around and, and have a list of the shit we missed in the, in the oh, comments. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Man. Oh yeah. It's so oh, many that, 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 that get. Cause they just in the whole fucking Hall of Fame, and y'all didn't miss on on damn near none of them songs, man. Y'all sound still needed. I don't know, shit. That shit still necessary. You still gotta go back to some of that old world and shit just to hear shit. And motherfuckers pay a lot of homage to y'all too. Envy. But I can't yeah, even say that it's old shit, cause a lot of this shit was just a, a one off. Right. There wasn't nothing that sounded like that after that. Yeah. And like they said, they were just, they was a thousand miles ahead of that shit. Right. While we still like, <clears throat> that's the one. Right. Even, even like you look at like um, the Baton Rouge music. It's, it's called jig music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you look at, uh, you know, Mouse, Q Red, you know, Be Real. You know what I'm saying? You know, these niggas, like, they started kind of, you know, they started Happy out too. like. Uh, Happy, Happy for Red. Yeah. They, they started out with Webby and. And in uh Boosie. Boosie and, and the trail, you know what I'm saying? So and that, you know, it just that type, that jig music is it's like um you have to be on it to understand it. Yeah. You know, that's why that bounce music, well pussy popping music, you gotta <laughs> you gotta right. under <laughs> they starting to get a whiff of it now. A whiff. Let's <laughs> <laughs> start to get a whiff of it now. Come on. Bro. The aroma. <laughs> Look, Kylie Park will tell you. Kylie Park, he'll tell you, you know what I'm saying? God damn, fucking back that ass up, nigga. That's the yeah. number one. Oh, yeah. How yeah. yeah. the fuck yeah. we forget that record? That song is over a billion oh spins God, already. Yes, they got an award for that yeah. shit. Yeah. A billion spins, my nigga. White women do yoga to that song. Oh, man. To back that ass up? Yeah, like man. the exercise class, Everything. spin class Real and shit. Because that's the whole, they got a whole little seminar. Yes, indeed. The wow. twerking is part of, uh, it's an exercise now. How do they have yeah. Yeah, twerking twerk classes? Yeah, twerk that exercise. That shit about to be in the Olympics. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> twerk Olympics. I'm no, it's going to be in the Olympics. Twerking. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you but, think America got that shit just you so know what? Real wait, you shit. see what them Russian girls been I up to. I can believe that. I can believe that. I want to see what Africa that. gonna do. Africa gonna have a whole bunch oh of my shit. Africa God. Gonna that's gonna kill it. They're gonna be the fuck with it. Come on, man. A twerk a thong, What'd you say? Bro? Come on. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, Brazil just checked in. That's <laughs> Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay, no fake oh, ass. Oh, shit. The ass gotta be real, though. Come bro. Ain't nobody you come here on steroids. Ain't nobody beating that lady with the baby on her chest from South Africa. No, 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 come on. Africa gonna win it. No, they got to. Africa gonna win. That's where it really is. But then they gonna change the rule. Yeah, it they, ain't gonna they, be yeah. what it's supposed to be because it's the Olympics. They gonna be like, oh, we I don't know. I've seen some amazing things on the streets. Oh, the upper body was, it, was too <laughs> still. Oh, it's just how it's supposed to be. Oh, it's some, it's some, it's some real talent on the streets of New Orleans. Yeah. Oh my God. Everybody twerk. I've been to a few Mardi Gras. I've, I've seen grandmas put the baby down. Oh yeah. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. In the middle of the street. Them yeah, the baby starts with a daiquiri right between them and just like, right. this girl a poo. <laughs> I gotta get down here some more. Man. I'm just a bit from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and drove down. I'm staying with my right. sister. Right, and, and the shit is just so <laughs> natural, my nigga. You yeah. could be at, they got have brought at the bus stop, nigga just passing their car. Go. And she forgot, oh god damn, shit, I'm not in the club, shit. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> that beat. Mm. Trigger Man and Brown's beat. Those yeah, that trigger man. What's one of the ones that you that you forgot that was your song? Like some one that you had to hear again to be like. Oh man, it's too many. Yeah. Yeah. Uh damn it's hard. I could tell you a song that I did that was big that I don't like. What? Who the who? <laughs> Why you like that one? Because he took wow. the outcast hook and really thought he made that shit up. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not the song. It's not that the song bad. Just the fact that um, you no, know, man, somebody somebody told him, gave him the idea to do it, mm -hmm. and um, they really thought he really thought that you know he made it up, or they convinced him that there's some new shit to say. But the song dope though. I, I just yeah. don't like it because of that. That part, right? 
a lot of songs that I do, it, 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 it's late to me, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> now that, that, that mystical record, um, I think that was one of the, one of the uh, dope songs that, um, That's the Nigga. Yeah. That's the Nigga, That's the Nigga. I think that was the first one that he did um, on the tank, huh? Turn your no. head towards your ass and say bye bye. <laughs> you stop, 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 stop. Um, yeah. Now he did that on um, What You Think on About It. Nigga, I be fucking on your brain. Throw it off. Too, too, like cuckoo. Song called he put his dick on the track. It make make it sad. Sad. I put my dick on the track. That yeah. motherfucker had a way with words. The <laughs> These other niggas ain't gonna do what I do. And he was right. moving just like this. Kick because shit. it was always it was either him or me it was gonna close out because it was they had to balance the record. When they do like did like a lot of those soldier records. Check this out. You putting us the dick on the track with the pussy pioneer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mr. Pussy Popper? They got some songs together. Oh, yeah. I'm about to go listen. Give me one. Mm-hmm. That bitch. That bitch. Mm-hmm. He did fuck them hoes. Fuck them hoes. <laughs> he did that <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> give me one. <laughs> <that. laughs> uh, Trip them hoes or something. <laughs> <laughs> give me one. Give me one. They got <laughs> fucked them other niggas. I, 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 didn't, I didn't do no, 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 no uh, pussy. They had that sold up. Yeah, I, I, I didn't do no pussy mm-hmm. popping music. I did bounce that ass. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. close. That's pretty cool. Pussy Classic. is neighbors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Dance right there, pussy right there. Yeah. They neighbors. Mm-hmm. And if you would count Freakos as one. Oh, you know. Strip club. That's when, that, when that song came out, that's when strippers started really getting money, money. Mm-hmm. Like, that's when the strippers started getting rich. Did you know that? Strip club, no. man. Yeah. Yeah. And since we talking on the subject, we keep this pussy popping, this pussy just keep coming up. I, I you got can't a question. Have pussy popping without the pussy. I got a question for y'all too. <laughs> okay. You put it on them or you put it in them? <laughs> I'm on. I believe I'm on. You put it on them. I put it on them. I damn sure put it in them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm at the point in my life where <laughs> pussy don't scare me. I'm already somebody's daddy. Um, bro? Yeah, I know what real pussy hitting on. I put it on them and in yeah, them. Yeah. On up in them. On up in them. On, on them and in them. them. I put it around them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm at that part of my life too. Well, I mean, it's hit or miss. And wherever I aim, it ain't going right there in the eye. Damn, what I've been through. I done totally missed what I was going for. I'm <laughs> shit. It is what it is. I'm just trying to get there. I don't even fuck where it goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna, look, we're gonna, we, we gonna have to send you some of this. We're gonna have to send you some of the exclusive pussy popping shit that we did. Oh, man. Man. I want to hear some unreleased pussy popping music that's too nasty to be out. Um, bro. That's, that's we got a shit load of that. Did you hear that intro? This nigga done put a clitoris in the goddamn side. <laughs> 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 fucking mystic talking about putting my cock at where she fought that shit. <laughs> Mystical said a lot of shit that we might not be able to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's on, that's on record. That's on record. No. Nope. I put my cock at where, where, how you say it? How you say it? You say I put my cock at where she fought at. <laughs> <laughs> not fart, fart. Hey, man, we, we, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to produce that one. <laughs> it was good for the time, but that shit might not fly in these days. That nigga have a way with saying some motherfucking sexual shit, shit. Hey, man, that nigga say some, say some wild shit. 
<laughs> said dick crooked like a roach leg. <laughs> Who the fuck had time to look at roast leg and be like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> that look like something. <laughs> oh, I know something that, that looked like that. Said, said, I'm harder than a nigga watching Janet Jackson and draw. Shit, that was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how you know the shit was good. He got like that. That's how he exactly. Mm, that man. motherfucker, he he he's an fuck, he's an amazing writer though, bro. When that yeah, when that motherfucker go in, I miss it, but it's I'm on fire. What he rapping is, oh, he was, like, he was oh fire, yeah, but he was just talking about being a dope ass rapper. That shit was crazy. Man. You know that part. Stack that, your chips. Yeah. Man. That record, that that was the first beat I did that I did not put a hi hat in that bitch. It was just a kick and a, a bass line and a snap. Did you do the shit on accident? Or you just had other no. Shit I did that bitch. Yeah, I did that whole. You know what I'm saying? You met, you left it off uh, on purpose or you just said fuck it? I just didn't hear it in there. Mm-hmm. No, 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 you're right. You're right. Come to think of it, because when he wrote it, he was trying, I think he was trying to go somewhere. So he was like, man, let me just rap on it how it is. And he did it. And I just mixed it and just didn't even put shit in there like fuck. Sounds good how it is. On to the next one. <laughs> Still jamming though. But still jamming though. That was a dope mm-hmm. ass story though. Mm-hmm. The way he did that bitch. It's yeah. hot. It's hot, steam, sweat, and toast in the turn. <laughs> the whole house on fire. You can't stop it from right. That nigga went the fuck off on me. That nigga said I'm windmilling in the dirt and that didn't it work. Didn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he on, um, man, I, I just, just like, this, see, these are the memories. When you're talking about that kind of shit, that just make you like, God damn. And that moment when we first did a show and did about it, and Mia did her verse. Oh my God. When she Shout stepped up from behind Hallelujah. everybody oh, yeah. and laid her and, and did her verse, I know we was in we was in Ohio. I don't I don't know if it was motherfucking Cleveland. I don't know if it was, I don't know where in the fuck we were. And when we was at the stadium, something like that? No, the stadium was too small, so they moved it outside at the fairground. the fairground, yep. Cleveland, that was Cleveland. Mm. So that mm-hmm. shit layered, you could hear her saying some shit under the shit. How y'all did it? She wrapped that? her verse, and she did another verse and put it all the way in the back. That shit crazy. You can hear it if you listen to that bitch. I was like, I want to hear that verse too. I can't hear it all the way though. Right. I'm like, right. can I flip yeah, the tape over? How the fuck does this work? Yeah. yeah. I always listen to the extended version of that shit. Bro, when she did that, it, it, it never failed, bro. Because what she'd do, she'd just duck all the way off in the back to where nobody see her. Because she would do her part and just get the fuck out the way. It's like every time she came up and did her part, her and Mr. go the same way. They do their part and get the fuck. So every time they came out, it was like their first time hitting, stepping in. Made him miss him. Mm-hmm. But when she came up there, nigga, no, I'm about it. All the whole hands went up. Mm. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm that, that motherfucker, yeah. The hard mystic was the I'm wrong one. They, nobody never wanted to rap after him. Damn. Ooh, Mike too hot after that shit. <laughs> right, fuck that. They're like, man, what the fuck I'm gonna do coming behind this shit? I know Boy, my shit gonna be dope. Doing God, everything. Damn. Niggas was playing slim. <clears throat> <laughs> you heard what she said? Uh-uh, I ain't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nigga, wake yeah. up, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> New face, you don't tell me the questions. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, First of all, nice to meet y'all. Big fan of you guys. No Peace doubt. Shout out to everything y'all do for the culture. I'm a big No Limit fan. I'm for sure. Every- Why, well, you got it with you, bro? He got it with Oh, we, we got it all. Bring him on. Nah, nah, he it's like, us. when we did our people. part, you know, it's like, he'll come in, what you got, let me get in the booth. He was one, he was, he was like, the, he was like the only, some of the, one of the biggest, the success of No Limit was by P not knowing what a good beat was. So anything we played, he just got on that bitch. 
Oh my God, not starting with the movie, huh? Right. Man, new, this is new face. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, right. Hip hop collector, he has new everything. Face. The cassettes. Bro. Wow. He got everything. Ooh, we. Hey. You know, I, I just said no Wow. Oh I went and goodness. took off every road. Steady mobbing. I would never forget this. See this tape? I need yeah. Can we record this record? Wow. And Mystical and Fiend got on this bitch. Oh wow! They came, Ranks the harmony. They bro. came in that motherfucker <laughs> on cassette. Come on, Come on man! New face got that shit crazy. Ooh, magic, magic. Oh, right there. Just came oh. able to see merge. Oh, he signed this bitch too. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Right New face go hard with the hip hop wow. shit, man. Big Ed, right. Big Ed, that's oh, the piece. Big Ed. Oh, he signed all them bitches. Yeah. Oh, that's my partner, right yes, there. Yes, indeed. Bleed. Young Bleed. Yeah. Oh, that's my oh, boy, come on, man. man. Yeah. Mighty Temptation. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Yes, oh, right. Right. Tim Smooth, right? yes, in peace, man. Oh, no, I don't wow. think I need to take a picture of this. I forgot about you. do have the, uh, the car, man. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Nice man, God bless, man. Yeah. We appreciate oh, man. Man. Appreciate yeah. your love and support, work, brother. Man. Look at all this, man. Yes, indeed. All this April 9th, just yesterday. Damn. Wow. I was in that Wow. I went to that bitch. I was in that helicopter. Wow. I was at that bitch, yo. And man, when you, ironically, you know. they DMX passed, you know. Wow. When y'all look at this, man, what, what, what do you, what do you see? Right. Man, memories, number of see, memories, man. See, like, now he brought up a whole nother conversation that could be yeah. another three hours. <laughs> oh, bro, just looking at this motherfucker. Come on. Show the camera that. Show that to the camera. You. Man. I remember recording it. That was the other one I said it was two songs. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. I remember being in the booth. I mean, P was in the booth with um with Craig B. And I was oh, making the beat. Up, when mm -hmm. I was making the beat, C Murder was next to me. And you're like, man, let me hear that. So I gave him the headphones, he put them bitches on. And you're like, P. Nigga, you need to hear this shit. So after P laid his verse, he came out, put the headphones on, boom, and he still home. Come on, man, let's record that shit. Let's record that shit. He got up in that bitch with no limit soldier. I told you. He gave that hook, he laid that hook, and after he laid that hook, he said, man, put me on another track. Nigga, busting the low. Ain't the hardest to go. I still don't remember this fucking lyric for that record. Because I'm the hardest <laughs> motherfucker. I was here watching niggas body in the cockpit. Now you know a lot of niggas started using that flow on the record. Yeah. Yeah. Pimp C and Mom. I heard you listen to Jay Z um uh Hey Poppy. Yeah. It was either Hey Poppy or Dirt Off Your Shoulder. No, it was Dirt Off Your Shoulder. Mm-hmm. Hold it hold the position. Yeah, rockin', know you. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, that record, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh, 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 yeah, that's it. Didn't you have in your basement Baby and Birdman in the studio sitting at the same time and they had a conversation? That's the same right. person. Baby yeah. and Birdman. The same person. Baby and Pete. <laughs> Baby and Pete. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it, it was you know, baby yeah. and Pete. I didn't think yeah. had a new face can't believe it either, man. This is literally all the work. Y'all was from then, man. Shit. Still working. This is probably um a third of it. <clears throat> probably like a quarter of ninety-eight. Y'all dropped twenty-seven. Ninety-eight. Yeah. I was in yeah. school every Tuesday. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm gonna right. find that clipping in the bill, you know the billboard top one hundred, right? It was a time to where right. we had sixteen albums on the top one hundred. Come on. I'm gonna find that clipping. That that that's ten that's ten percent of the top one hundred, not everything. The top. The top one hundred. Yeah. That's more than ten percent. Like when you dropping a record every fucking week, like I said, man, we we didn't have time to to think about what was dope or not. We shit, this is dope. Yeah. All this shit is dope. It is yeah. crack. Heroin. Shout out to Fiend, man. Oh, yeah, man. You know what's so dope? Pete, yeah, Pete, oh Pete named every album on this bitch. Yeah, he sure did. Dang. The only one he didn't name, I named it. And that was true to, not true to the game, uh, uh, charted to the game. 
Oh, you get yeah, silk that yeah, title? I, that. I didn't know that. Yeah, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't, um, they didn't know what to name the project. I said, Cuz, charge it to the game. Yeah, that's it, Cuz. Shout out to the game. That's the only one I named. That's stupid, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Damn, man. I'm getting my feelings looking. And just think, bro, we have <clears throat> we have a plaque for we have a plaque for every last one of these fucking albums, my nigga. Everyone. Everyone. Mm-hmm. They go mad. Come on his way home. Yeah. On his way home. Yeah. Be home in a minute. This one of the songs that broke the mold for no limit. Uh, the song Moby did against the fire. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is for the real true gangsta. They needed that one. The gangsters <laughs> needed that one. Yeah, <laughs> bro. This kind, this kind of, the, you know, uh, the, uh, it, it wasn't the beginning of No Limit because no, no Limit was established before we got there. But when it came down to um, building the foundation and, and building that bitch, this was one of the motherfucking records. Hey, this is that project, let me hold it. <clears throat> Man, this project here, yeah, I remember, we were working, I think we were just working on the About It soundtrack. Right. And they go to show you he was freestyling the whole thing. Man, I remember him bringing them to us. We were in KLC grandmother's basement and we were working on the soundtrack, that soundtrack there. And he said, stop what you're doing. Yeah. Stop what y'all doing. We need y'all to work on this on, on these guys right here. Their first their first name was Double Vision. And people said, nah man, nah, I can't roll with that. Then he named him Cain and Abel. You heard me? So uh so we just this was the first complete project that we produced from beginning to end, A and R and everything. We had uh Steph Steph at the time her name is China White. You know what I'm saying? And another chick named Scandalous, we had a group called that we were going to make with them, her, them two and me called the Lady Thugs, right? It never worked out, though. But, you know, they're on this project, and we produced it. Max showed up on this project as well. And uh, that we were able to conceptualize. He only named it. He named it Seven Sins. We just kept everything, you know, consistent with that title. Mm -hmm. Me and KL produced that whole motherfucker, bro. Yeah, this is a real special product, project to me, you know what I'm saying? Real tough shit. You won. I'm talking about the inside. I'm talking about, I'm by the uh, Cain and Abel. I'm by the, pull that out. There you go. I'm talking about the, uh, the inside. And this is a cassette, man. Man, I'm tripping. Right. <laughs> but now, just think about this here, though. In that two week process of us making these albums, Come on. <clears throat> shit fresh. Come on. Just that's, a, that's a CVS receipt. <laughs> this one side. <laughs> that shit stretched out. You self check out. <laughs> yeah, CVS receipt. Man. Everybody Man. on their Mercedes. Where Mercedes at? We remember that one. Oh, oh yeah. As a young man, I remember that remember. one. He's <laughs> like, when the fuck yeah, does Mercedes man. drop? <laughs> Bro, this shit crazy, man. It is crazy, man. God damn. Mm -hmm. That just knowing this is this. I was telling the new face this shit is. This is a whole. This defines a whole generation. Come on, man. I never forget the day Bam Everywhere. came to my house. And um, that nigga was like, God damn. Fucking plaques. You mm -hmm. seen all the fucking plaques? He was like, Shit. Fuck. <laughs> And that pushed him though. He did um, Matt Cadillac 22. He recorded that in my house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Craig B mixed it. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, he recorded that motherfucker in my house. He learned how to. He did that song learning how to yeah. use the 4000. Mm hmm. To, to my uh, uh, band guy. Right? Yeah. Mm hmm. Love yeah. that dude, man. And, and speaking Nothing. of them plaques, man. Today's uh, birthday. Shout out to Ben. Shout out to Dave. Happy birthday, man. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Ben. Yeah. The thing about those plaques, man, like, you know, Ben I always talk about, he always tell a story about those plaques. One thing that was special about Cuz, man, Master P, if you wore a tank, he had so many tanks that was on our label. How many people wore tanks in the Man, it was. If you, if you wore a tank, you got a plaque, man. If you work, if you clean the windows for no, at the at the building, he got you a plaque. You know what I'm saying? Everybody had. Everybody had a plaque, man. You got some people in the industry now, like me. Me and KL got 
music with people out here that we did post No Limit, we still ain't got plaque from. Yeah. They know who they are. We're not going to name no names. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we, we ain't got no plaques, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. But yeah, man, um, I just had to throw that in there, man. P, P looked out, you know, at, at one time, man, for everybody. It was a family business, and um, that's a fine memory that I got of it, man. I'm really tripping out off these cassettes, bro. You, <laughs> look, 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 look. Really this, this, this 28 cassettes, and I ain't counting the movies. <clears throat> yeah, he probably got every everything yeah. from over there. From um, there. Look, Italy, bro. <laughs> Italy. Um, bro. Yes, yeah. indeed. That was K. Lou artist, man. That was man. K. Lou artist. We, we had nothing to do with the project. <clears throat> shout out to Romeo. Shout out to Lil Cuz. Yeah, man. We we had man look we had our times doing that shit. Yeah, I remember we came here and we did two dates. When, where was that? When was that? Do back I think in '97, '98. That's when we 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 were at five five nine. In the bounce. Okay. Oh, shit. And was and bounce the club bounce. bounce. Oh the bounce. Yeah, oh, yeah, bounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come we, on we, man. We did two nights back to back. Man. I think one of the stages collapsed. Yeah, one of the yeah. stages collapsed, and we packed we packed so both was, nights. It was it, it was it, it collapsed, and and we was pepper sprayed. Sure was pepper yeah. sprayed. Yeah. yeah, right here in Atlanta, bro. Damn, and that's back in them day they had club Nicky's. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, of course, uh, the Blue Flame. You know, all of those course, were, were the staples. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You 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 kind of went I'm back to the feeling back. right now. <laughs> That's um, twenty. That's twenty-eight cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. Cassettes. That's a lot of music. The cassettes, though, bro. And they're, they're not no short. They're not no short album. Right. Mm -hmm. I was having. They at least twenty. A piece. Come on, at least twenty at least. songs. Each album had at least. Remember the double album, West Coast Bad Boys. Mm -hmm. oh, T.R.U. Mm-hmm. Now see this album right here. Mm. Oh yeah. Your Street Life album. It was at the moment where um, we left. Fiend was he was he was trying to work shit, work things out with P. And when we recorded it, I told Fiend, man, do you really want to get this nigga this album? Because yeah. I didn't want it. Because I when when I heard how well in the process of recording, we heard the dopeness in this bitch, and I was like. We about to get this nigga this album, and I know we ain't gonna get paid because we left. I knew it. We didn't see a penny off that bitch. Damn. That's a gold album. But you know, Fiend wanted to work it out and, and fulfill his commitment with it. I'm like, man, you know what? I'm gonna put it in your hands. I'm gonna be good with, with it or not. Yeah. That's love right there, bro. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. You had the same experience with it, with it too, Don One. As far as uh, leaving, yeah. Nah, it, it was it was a different experience with us. Um, when our relationship kind of stopped, it was just because he wasn't really calling us anymore. He was just looking for whoever was hot at the moment, you know. But we talked though, like when before <clears throat> Don and, and, and Big Fest went over there. I wasn't like, man, no fucking go over there, man. Nah. I was like, man, look, yeah. this is my experience and this is what happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm not telling you don't go. There's money there. But expect this. Yes, yeah, look. Right. Yeah. So we had, we had their blessing and we knew it was going to be a short, short trip. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna pop the pussy though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I ain't saying that's all you do. That shit just it's interesting as fuck to me, man. I know you got a, a wide range of shit. Uh, I already, I already so know. much shit doesn't happen. But what? But, but when you know what you're known for, you know what you're known man. for. Man, <laughs> change that recipe. I wouldn't, man. <laughs> that's what this whole platform was created to do, man. It's to just right. show love to people who we think are dope, and y'all don't know that this is the soundtrack to. A lot of moments in our life, you know, Man, high school, hell yeah, beyond, goddamn, this is some <laughs> shit you always come back to. I don't thank you for yeah, bringing these motherfuckers out, man. Oh, oh man, if you had, if he would have had a proper heads up, 
he probably would have found some shit from him. <laughs> anyway, he got so much hip hop memorabilia, man. This wow. is just what he could grab at the moment, I'm sure. Man, but to be honest with you, man, I couldn't think of a better platform for us to uh, really express ourselves and showcase our talents, man. Right. You know, yeah, it, would, it, it ended the way it ended, but I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, to be honest no, with you, yeah, man. Yeah. If I could do it over again, man, we, I mean, we had fun doing it. You know what I'm saying? And we know that we uh, that our true value. You know what I'm saying? We still know our value to this day. Right. right. But I mean, that platform right there, man. Like you, I mean, this bringing back so many memories right here. Just that's what I was. I appreciate asking. Like, you did, for that, man. Did you get the? Have y'all even got to fully enjoy all of this music that y'all? No, nah. no. I'm, 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 I'm gonna go even further than that. Like, like right now, this is like our first time doing interviews, man. Yeah. yeah. We didn't do none of that. We we didn't do none of that back then. Yeah. yeah. We probably had some beat writers come in and give us some questions to pull their quotables in the magazine. But just being on the forefront of doing a full flash interview, yeah. we have never did that shit. Damn. All of this shit is like a first time experience. Well, you get it here first. Right here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, I'm so alone. Right here. Enjoy. All right, so yeah. seeing all of this work on the table, man, what's some of the, what are some of these songs that you think got slept on? You want to know some of the first thing that came to mind, though? Yeah. It's a lot of royalties that one paid. Damn. <laughs> that's, fuck, that's fucking it. Oh, that's, that's a hard one to swallow right there. You talking man. about a song that was slept on? That you feel, yeah. I'm just, I just named albums that were slept on. This oh, one, Big A was slept on. Big A, yeah. definitely. Big A and Prime Suspects. on, bro. Prime Suspects. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, because, you know, we, we had a... Um, Magic Air was slept on. This one slept on. on. Okay. Magic Air was slept on. Rest in peace, Magic, and his wife, Chastity. Uh, I think definitely this one was down. slept on. Oh, definitely. Oh, my definitely. God. Mac, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I mean, whole albums, man. But the thing is, like, like y'all said earlier, it was impossible for all that music to get to look. Cause you look at uh, the rotation on radio and television. Yeah. Like, you know, radio, you know, you already know right t these days, and I think even for the last 10 or 15 years, <clears throat> you hear the same song in rotation every 15 minutes. Right. Because right. you already know that's corporate things that's that's intertwined with shit, entwined man. with that. Man, it's, it, it's it would pro take three, four days to play all the yeah, shit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> That's why you know, it, it, it surprised us till this day that, like Kel said earlier, the album fillers, right. a lot of our, that's the whole nother uh, unique thing about <clears> our music, <throat> is that our, our album fillers right. were oh, bigger bro. songs than the video and radio songs. Right. That's what I was you know asking what earlier, is like, so you get used to creating, just creating, creating, creating. Like, I'm, do y'all still, work at that pace like you got to do like you're doing 500 songs a year oh hell no <laughs> this, this, this man the grandfather man. we don't we don't have a, we don't have the artists we have artists but not we don't have that artist but see that's why like a lot of these songs like this album wasn't slept on so just let them give it to them raw Jeez, but my niggas they get high with me. If it wasn't slept on, it, it, it didn't get the, 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 if it would have got the push. Catch it, you know what I'm saying? you're right, it wasn't slept on. It wasn't right. promoted. Right. Right. You know what I'm what? saying? What? You know, at, at, <laughs> like you said earlier, you know, I don't think, you know, we had a, a loyal following. Like, like y'all said, y'all were one of those ones, and you, you said it's already evident that you went to the store right. every Tuesday. And you right. still got them yeah. in your collection. So it still made the impact and the movies. But these are, like I'm saying, I'm saying these are songs yeah. that we still listen to yeah. on the regular. See what I'm saying? We don't listen to it on the tape, but that shit yeah. is on yeah. that goddamn <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's a cult. What we created was like a cult, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like religion. All religion started as a cult. You know what I'm saying? And the thing, the fact that we're on this show is because, you know, y'all, 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 like you say, this this was the soundtrack of a lot of people's lives, man. You know what right. I'm saying? Hours. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Man. So this uh, shit had us lit. Like and, I and said, thing, we appreciate y'all. Real talk, I gotta say it for the record, we appreciate y'all for being the supporters 
I don't right. like to use the word fan. You know what I'm she, saying? She. I like, we fans. Like, <laughs> okay. Nigga, you think <laughs> I won't come out there and, and let them motherfuckers say, Moby Dick, chest ain't parked this weekend. Nigga, this ain't gonna do fuck them all. I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> hey, I man, appreciate before it. Before I get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna kick it with me tonight. Come on, bro. My yes, favorite you. part is to add them, though. Baby, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Me indeed. And you man. in the room, sitting on Don Perignon. <laughs> it's whatever you want to do, baby. <laughs> that nigga got freaky as hell. That nigga started making a lot of people like you. Say it gets the prep school. Um, bro, I was feeling some kind of way that time. Who pushing his out of here? Sons of Funk. That ain't even him. You know. <laughs> Sounds a phone, bro. Everybody thought that was his group, didn't they, Jay? I thought that was his group. That's what I was telling you. I get that all the time, bro. Shout out to Rico. Shout out to Josh. Shout out to Dez, man. Look, bro, y'all did that, bro. (laughs) No, I can't, man. I can't. I'm an artist, man. (laughs) How many of them dead? Only one. Don't listen to them. We never got to see him. But yeah, man. So, yeah, a lot of people think that I did that, but them boys, man. The whole album, man. No, where, but where you, 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 you had to co-sign. Yeah, I co-signed to get them, them on to, it. To come in as a group. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, because he bought him to. Get out of respect. He asked more, but what you think? He sure did. You know what I'm so saying? Many, it's so many and hits on this. I thought, this is another, this another slept on one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Y'all listen to this one, bro? Got a song called Feels Like the First Time. Yeah. Man, this, this whole album rocks, bro. You was getting us motherfucker. And it's trying to think about the time you did me wrong. Oh yeah, man. Shout out to Jim. This is about shooting a nigga. And it's beautiful. Shout out to and rest in peace, Joe LeVert. You know what I'm saying? I pretty much did an interpolation of that, you know what I'm saying? And um we did a lot of interpolations and stuff. That's what made us special because, you know, we just made our version, the street version of, you know, slow jams, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or or even some classics, man. But Is yeah, that man. heaven for a gangster? Now, that was the first, that was the first the song Beast by the Pond produced together. Mm-hmm. Me, him, and Craig B. That was yeah. the first song that oh. we produced as Beast by before, the Pond. Before we go out, shout out to Craig B. Shout out to Odell, shout out to Los, man. C Los. You know what I'm saying? C Los, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we we've expanded the beast by the pound from a production situation to an all out brand. Right. That's why we out here like this here, man. We 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 have a revival going on right now of resuscitation because you know a lot of this generation, you know. They don't know where the sound comes from. And, I'm, and, they, I and a lot of them, you know, give them credit because yeah, they, yeah. they're really getting to, to discover all of this for the first time. Bro. Absolutely. Yeah. We got a loyal following, man. Shout out to the 85%. I know oh, they're going to pull up. Man, really Royal. appreciate y'all, man. man. Yes. Really appreciate y'all. Man, I really love y'all platform. And Fiend told me about it, you know, that his experience here. Yeah. I'd already known about you. Like I'm saying, I really love your platform. Thank you for inviting well, us to Well, don't let this be. The last time. We got, we still got uh, 47 more albums. Come on, man. Oh, man. Come on, man. Already, man. It, 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 man, it's it just so much of stuff that we didn't, um, bruh, you need to speak on our documentary. I will. Oh, yeah. Whatever y'all need. Both of y'all. Yeah. Whatever y'all need, man. Yeah, yeah we do have we a documentary do coming out. songs, we can do that. I would, I would be the motherfucker in there making them lyrics make sense. <laughs> Absolutely. And, 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 the, and the fact he's talking about a metaphorical ass. Because sometimes life gets hard. You have to put your knees on your elbows. Come, bro. Come, bro. And speaking, speaking of which, we will be looking for, because we didn't do a lot, like Kel said. Man, we were working around the clock. So we didn't have cameras, you know, run around us all the time. Do me a favor. Camcorders. Come back. We're gonna put the whole playlist together of just beats by the pound. Okay. Yeah. That's that. That'll be the one yeah. that'll really fuck us up. Yeah. Just to sit here and be like, nigga, li- listen to this. And I know y'all got more stories too. Who put them oh, goddamn bro. flukes right there? <laughs> That's for the documentary. That's the documentary. Let me ask you this, because okay. it, it still don't. 
How does it, how does it work? How does it work when say for instance you said that was the first record that y'all produced is Beast by the Pound. What does that look like to a to a person who may not understand what it you know what I'm saying how you can have three producers on on a track like that? Okay, I can explain that to you like that. Well, we when we I gotta smoke to this. This shit too good. Yeah. When we bro, this start, this episode gonna be five hours long. <laughs> I'm at the crib, bro. Oh, we can talk about every one of these songs individually. If y'all want to, yeah. and right. look, y'all do a part one, part, part two. Nigga, y'all can host this. <laughs> we'll oh, leave. I will leave. Bro. Talk about what y'all want to talk about. Number um, one, you ain't said shit. You have it. Um, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Chopper style, nigga. That's speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing else to say. Say it all with the music, motherfucker. Right. Yeah, yeah. Speaking my ass. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but, but it's like, like when um, we all, um, as far as beats by the pound, me, Moby, Craig, B. Odell, and, and CeeLo, like we all can do everything. But it's just certain things that each one of us is really good at. So I know. When we did uh, Heaven for a Gangster, Craig B did the bass line, because his bass lines and his grooves and shit is like, he have a, he, his, his ear for funk, you know what I'm saying? It's on some other shit, you yeah. know? And um, he started out with the bass line and uh, passed it to my homie, now you hit it. I yeah. did the drug, passed it to my homie, and passed it, you know, passed it to Moby. To where like we knew exactly what we had to do. Like you did them drums or your baby girl did them drums. <laughs> no, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you been had a little right. help. Right. <laughs> no, he did do? that. <laughs> you just turned the baby loose in the studio. No. All right. I, 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 I'll never forget when we did kick though, right? Come on, man. Shit dropping, man. Man, let me man. put this out and get a new one. That shit is smoking, big dog. I don't know. This, this is motherfucker. That's Al Popeye. Yeah. That shit happens, bro. Pie. Part of the game. Like that I said, when, when we did when we did kick though, right? I will never forget. I walked in that bitch, and uh, I think um, Pimp was behind the machine. He was behind the drum machine. And as um, soon as I walked up in that motherfucker, oh man, Kill, man, come do that drum shit you do, man. You know what I'm saying? So, cause the song was pretty much done. And Pimp, is, he is not a selfish motherfucker behind music. Right. By four, not. And um, when I walked in, he was already about to do the drums. And as soon as I came in, he told me, Kale, man, do that drum thing that you do. And after I did that, you know, that was, the song was in, it was done. You know, the best part about that story is that you never denied that it's a drum thing that you do, but you never mentioned what the drum thing was. It, it. They just let me, you just took credit for having that cold ass drum shit and didn't even really say it. Like, nigga, Cal, do that cold ass drum shit you do. I did it. Yeah, that was it after that. That's, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, but you know, cause Pimp, his mind, let me tell you something, I learned a lot from him just based off mixing and, you know what I'm saying, and shit. So, you know, um, I think we was doing um, Fiend Down South Slinging. Yeah. He showed me a trick on how to, um, with his vocals and shit, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I would, I would have never thought to do that shit to where um, he recorded his vocals. You know, when we go to mixing and engineering shit, we always put little effects on it to season it up. And he went up in there and actually recorded his effects with his real vocals. Yeah. To where we'll put a, a, a effect on it and try to give it a, a, a spread on the vocals, right? So he went up and there recorded his vocals and I did them bitches, I'm naked, said, nah, just take that one, turn it straight up, take this one and this one, and pan it that way, and pan it that way. He said, turn them down a little bit. And he said, now nah, listen to it. I put the headphones on, and I had to look to see if I had the effect on that bitch. I'm like, nah. And I'm like, God damn, that motherfucker pimp. You know that Rest shit. in peace, Pimp C, man. Yeah, bro. Because that's one of the yeah, hardest talking. opening lines in a rap song. The game fucked up and I ain't got no friends and I done spent my last $70,000 on the drop top bed. Oh, my God. I'm about to put the Ooh. 45 to the heel figure. Lay it down, motherfucker. Yes, God bless it for mine. 
Y'all know. <laughs> Rest in peace, MC. Right, 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 right. Yes, indeed. Right. He, he rocking with us, man. That's, yeah, man. man, that's our loves right there, man. I'm about Shout to pull out. a kick, dog. Lay down on the floor. That's one of them ones. But see, when that motherfucker, my moment of, of actually saying pimp recall when him and Fiend and Bun did Down South Sling It. Yeah. I'll never forget that shit. That nigga came in that bitch dressed like fucking Run DMC. Boy, he had his leather jacket on, he had his hat, you know, he had his glasses on like DMC, right? And he wrote his verses on some paper about, about the size of his phone, right? Mm -hmm. On the front you and the back. Too. You did too, show him how you did That nigga it, came in that motherfucker, bro. He wrote his verses down on some <laughs> little bit ass paper. <laughs> that nigga did his verse. I got the cocaine lady, white lady, by the key. He ran through that bitch. And he switched the, the rest of the verse on this one. And while he switched to this verse, he had the other verse wrote on the back of this one. So while he rapping it, he flipped this bitch over like this. <laughs> then he went to here and did the last verse like this here. And then he finished that whole all. Yeah, boy, that boy. Pimp boy, that shit was so special, fucking boy. funny, bro. <laughs> that nigga came yeah. up in that yeah. bitch. I got the cocaine lady, white lady, by the key. And went running that bitch. And he went to the other part. And while he going to that bitch, he, he flipping this over for the, uh, the, you know what I'm saying? And when he finished, he went to this one and flipping this over to finish the verse like that. I'm like, oh, man, I've never seen that shit. What type of concentration shit. that takes, bro? Man, that's bro, right. you know what I'm yeah. saying? The finger the work, the flip PC, shit. Man. Yeah. Damn. And Bun just sitting in the cut. Now that dude, yeah, shout out to Bun B, man. But how that nigga know it was going to be long enough for the song? This nigga he wrote it. two fronts and backs. He wrote it. That's four sides. That's got to be enough, nigga. Right. <laughs> he wrote that motherfucker, my nigga. It is the fact that he was in that bitch, standing up in the booth, mic in front of him, and he liked his hill. You know what? I'm like, Why are we going talking about right now in Pimp C? Bruh, but I don't, what I really don't get is how can, I mean, just because they say Wayne ain't write his verse and Jay-Z don't write his verse. My thing is now, uh, how can you be a songwriter without writing a song now? See, a lot of these artists, they, had, they like to have bragging rights say, I don't, I don't write that, I just go in there. Shit. You, you know what I'm saying? If I said it, I wrote it. I wrote it, I wrote it <laughs> with saying, my mouth, goddammit. No, I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying being like, I understand certain lyrics, you know, can you know, be freestyle or whatever. Right. But like, a lot of stuff don't make sense to me now. Right. I'm saying like, you know, yeah. be responsible songwriters, you know, especially, you know, if you want that song to be memorable, you know, right, that's why right, I think right. there's a difference between this generation and that generation because these songs stand the test of time. Like you say, right. you write it with your mouth because yeah. it came from a certain place. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think they just like, I don't know what it is nowadays, man, I'm not trying to hate on this new generation because I do like a lot of this music out here right yeah. now, but I think that uh, artists should really, you know, at least write it here. Right. You know what I'm saying? What advice do you find yourself giving young producers these days? Man, let me start with Don Juan, man. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. Shit, that's life. You gotta get, get <laughs> back up and keep going, bro. Right. You know? Man, I, I would say, hey man, be original. Yeah. Be right. original, uh, study music, you know what I'm saying? Some kind of way, even if you don't know how to read it, study the best who did it. You know what I'm saying? Like beyond hip hop, go into the jazz, you know what I'm saying? Go into the rock, you know what I'm saying? Study some old music and be a real connoisseur with this thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's what right. I suggest, you know? Well, that's, that's a, that can work in a lot of things. Whatever I would tell you. Area of expertise and study, study your craft. craft. Right. Mm -hmm. study your I would craft. tell you, um, remember why you started it. Because it's like um, everything we did, like no, put up pretty much no limit. First ten albums, we did it knowing that we weren't gonna get paid a penny Damn. to put the company in position to win. And be serious <laughs> about it because this shit can be a real expensive hobby. Yeah, yes, yeah. it can. That's what I was saying. If you took if you took that approach, like how do you sustain it? No, you like, gotta take a hit like that just, right. to, just to take <clears> off. <throat> you know what I'm saying? Because it, it, you look at it like, like right now, it's like um, 
the value of I'm not gonna say the value of production has changed and it, it you gotta understand like the shit that I, I I pay for this equipment. So I'm not just gonna give you, you know, when they come up to me like, man, do you have any mixtape beats? What the fuck is a mixtape beat? Right. You know what I'm saying? Is that like, dude, this fucking drum machine was thirty five hundred dollars. This compressor was twenty eight. You know what I'm saying? So they, the, the producer, they have to learn to put a value on what music is, you know what I'm saying? And um, just don't give it away. But some, some got lucky and it worked for them. But that one time, you know what I'm saying? And I always say, um, man, look, remember why you're doing it because you're not going to go through and... and, and um, you're going to have to come up to a point where you're going to have to pay for something. Right. Yeah, I don't give a damn it is because um, how we came up, we came up to where we actually had to buy. Even back then, if you was bootlegging, you still had to pay. You had to buy the CDs. You had to find a nigga to press your shit. Yeah. You had to get J-Cars. You had to buy jewel cases. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even when you was bootlegging shit, you had to pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regardless on how you put it. You know what I'm saying? So... And um, just always remember, man, it's like when you get up in this, just always remember that. Remember why you started. Yep. And it no, may not work out for you. It, it may take fucking um, five years before you get your break. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I put my first record out in 89, my nigga. And I, when we got with uh, P and like, uh, just say like the end of 94. December of 94, you know what I'm saying? And we started putting out records with him, me and Mobile, when 95 hit. I remember me and him got our first paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> we really got, we got out some shoes, man. No. We didn't ever seen that type of money. Right, and you look at it like this here, like how Beast by the Pound form, my nigga, was when we got out there, we weren't making no money. So me and Mobile, we were like, man, we gotta make some money out here. So we was like, um, man, let's, Mobile was like, well shit, let's start a production team around this bitch. And you're like, he said it just like that, dude. Yeah, he said, let's get a production <laughs> team <laughs> start around this bitch. Right and they're like, what we going to call that motherfucker? He was like, uh, I don't know what we going to call it yet, but I do got the, I got this hook stuck in my head. Right. These old. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, we were like, it was one, I always said, we don't know which one came up with the part, because I think Moby came up with the pound. And I say, well, beats by the pound. Oh, it was vice versa. So we went like, fuck it, while we was out there, you know, I mean, got he was really me. never, he was never there. Yeah. So we had to, you know, try to find a way. And so man, Moby found a way. We got out some business cards made. KLC, Moby, Dick, Beats by the Pound. We had our little pager numbers on that bitch. And P got one and saw it, right? <laughs> the next day he came up, handed us some cards, said no limit, Beats by the Pound cards. Yes, indeed. <laughs> That's when he started hiring on the records. I got beats by the pound. And one thing I want to add to the production, to, to you know, that the question you asked about what advice do we have to give these young producers. First of all, know what the definition of a music or a record producer is. Really That's find cool. out what it, see, just because you pay, you could spend a million dollars on equipment and push some buttons on, make some beats or copy and paste, whatever the case may be, whatever you, what works for you. But it's more to that than production, the music production. Right. Like you got some people who ain't even touched the equipment, <clears throat> like the Quincy Jones, like the uh, Michael Jacksons, Puffy. like the Puffies, you understand what I'm saying? But the, the, the true definition of of a, a record producer is the one who actually put, puts the record together, uh, supervises the session, the songs, the, you know, you know, oversees that process. Just right. like a, a director behind a film camp, you know, film, a, a, a director of a film or a movie, you know, <coughs> and the producer, they put together the talent yeah. and compiles that yeah, and then consider compose it and, like and consider and hire the musicians how they do the delegation from you know each artist and the songwriters you understand what i'm saying and considers the budget yeah. right. how how it's going to get paid for that's what a record producer is right. you know what i'm saying 
a beat maker is just so happened to be like a drum, it's what you call a drum programmer. If you read old credits, like that had drum programming, like we, we have a beat machine, like the 808, <laughs> so on and so forth, the MPC 60, that's what, that, that particular process in Tata is really is right. called a drum programmer. Right. You know what I'm saying? So first of all, you know, really know just because you made a beat doesn't make you a producer, man. Because right. we, we sat there and like we oversaw the sessions, we engineered, we not, know, not knowing we were, at that time we didn't know that that was a separate yeah. job. Right. From engineering to uh, wiring up the studio and stuff like that. We thought, oh, that was part oh, of, of a producer. Right. But when we found out just like meeting with um, uh, Rosa that time, you know, he, you know, a certain thing that he didn't know technically that we did know. Right. We thought that all encompassed being a producer and not necessarily, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, first define what, what right. is a music producer or record producer. Right before calling yourself that, you know what I'm right. saying? And then know what comes with that territory. Right, you know because you can sit up here and have ideas, but just don't know how to work the equipment. That's my mm -hmm. fucking problem right now. <laughs> <laughs> See, if y'all want to do something or whatever, Right, man. so you, you, you can come to this bit. I understand that damn beat machine with 35, I'm, I got it. I got right, it. you know, because, right, you can come <laughs> in and be like, man, look, I got this fucking bass line and you hum it to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I want, that, what, what I they, want credit if I do that. Right. What, what yeah, they consider right. producing is really songwriting. Right. Absolutely. There, there you go. Right. And, and, and the people that yeah. works the machine is an engineer. Right, because sitting here doing this interview with y'all, man, I know I need one beat by the pound. I can't get beats. I can't afford beats by the pound. I think I'm going to be able to do one. <laughs> And then I'm gonna get one uh, pussy popping track. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be done. I'm just gonna do a, a, a one a, a A and a B side. Right, 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 <laughs> right. right. Just gonna do a thing. Then do like two minutes of the instrumental, but I. <laughs> Hey, Lose, you got beats by the pound. It was one beat. That is all it was. <laughs> I told him to go long, though. It <laughs> <laughs> me a long beat. I looped it. That oh, whole yeah. beat could have been a pound, though. You know what I'm hey, saying? man, I paid for this beat, so y'all gonna listen to it. Watch when the flutes come in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, nah, but that's what it is, though, bro. Like, you know, produce. That's why when people say that nigga fucking puff it on produce, yeah, he do. Yes, he does. Yeah, he do. Because, like, when you gotta look at an essay, let's give one scenario, to where, like, uh, say, um, an artist may be in the booth and they say, yeah, I, I want sweet potatoes. Nah, don't say sweet potatoes. Say mashed potatoes. Right. So that that's a suggestion. So that's he's actually. The one who's directing that, who is producer, right. saying like, hey man, do it this way, or said, uh, dictate it certain, a certain kind of way, you know what I'm saying? You're not so, supposed to get no goddamn 80% of the publishing for saying this shit. That for bad yeah. potatoes? <laughs> <All right>. Well, <laughs> well that, that's, we, now we talking about songwriting now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't that, know that's what, about it. I ain't never. <laughs> that's a whole, that's another thing, another thing about this industry, like, like we would say, do your research <clears> on the business, because I like to uh, always tell artists this. You know, talent is born every day and it dies every day. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, the, and so we can always find like Tupac is dead, DMX just died, but another right. one is always being born. Right. So we look right. at this equation. <clears throat> Music business, business is this. 90% 90 90 business and 10% talent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Mystical even said that on one of his records you know what i'm saying so if you be on that 90 percent you know what i'm saying creativity is always happening you know but you got to know how to monetize yeah. that creativity <laughs> and know how to really protect yourself by number one getting copyright right you know what i'm saying and also learn how to find which publishing company that fits what you want to get out of the out of, out of the deal you know what i'm saying you got bmi ascap csac you know what i'm saying and then you know how to how you know how to monetize it from the performance of it just know how to study the business. Right. I, when I came up, that was before the internet. We used to go to the library and go get the uh, forms and, you know what I'm saying, and see the, from uh, the, the Library of Congress and uh, go to bookstores and find book, book back in the day. There was this book that Kashif, shout out to Kashif, wrote called, called What You Better Know About the Music Industry. Yeah. So I know there's many more books that came out since then that you got to study this because it is a job. It's an industry, you know what right. I'm saying? You know, people like us and like these guys on this, on this, uh, who hosting this show, we make it look easy. But we I got, do. you know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> we make it look easy. But you it is, 
You can do this shit. It is work that yeah, they don't know how much work my fuckers put in. You don't know shit about the do it justice system. They don't know. Yeah, you work the work that do it justice system. Real talk, man. It's work that goes into it. You never had to be nice to a mean ass librarian named Miss Pat. Real talk, huh? Niggas ain't never worked yeah. to do it. Did you please find this book, Miss Linda? You ain't never <laughs> had yeah. a late fee. You ain't never been banned from the library because you owe five dollars. And have a team that believes you outside of the music, man. Like we got two lovely ladies over here, man. Shout out to Mimi. I know why y'all like them because they D. rap gangster music. And, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, those, man. Those are different kind of ladies. They do what they do, man. And having a team that you that you can have confidence in, they have confidence in you. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it takes a team to make this happen, man. I mean, the music is one thing, but there's a whole nother business outside of this that make that that gets it to y'all, that gets it to this part. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to understand that there's a whole machine that runs this. You know, if you so happen to have, you know, a product that's, you know, you're ready to uh, put out in the public, expect what comes with it because there's some politics that come with it, yeah. a whole lot of it. You know what I'm saying? So... I just got to put that out there. It's not their business bro. to teach you the business. You just a product. Yeah, yeah you got to do it. Well, look, man, I definitely hope this ain't the last time y'all come through the trap. Absolutely and, not. And thank y'all for all oh, of your music you agree, contributions. Man. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate man. Man, look, love y'all, bro. This is the 85 South Show. We are out of here. Damn, man. That shit. Wow, good, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. 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 Th